The following is a special presentation of iRacing on LSR TV, your home for sim racing. Live tonight from the center of racing, we're here at Daytona on LSR TV for tonight's running of the Make Chester Proud 500, the Drive for Suicide Prevention League. And we're happy to have you along here. I am Austin Coop up here in the booth, and then we've got Trevin Valderrama and Brandon Kutz. Kurtz, he's also here as well. And Cisco Scarb is in the production trailer somewhere down in the uh, in the middle of the speedway having a little bit of fun. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun here in just a little bit as we are currently in a qualifying session for these guys, for these drivers. We are having a full 200 lap, so bridle, bridle yourself up because we're going to have quite the quite the fun race here in store for us uh, tonight. Trevin, I'm going to go with you first here. We're going to have a, a little fun race, but it's for a real special cause, and it's going to be really uh, it's going to be a nice fun race to watch. Absolutely, this is a special race, Drive for Suicide Prevention. Uh, it's always a fantastic race that they put on, and it's always going to be a great show. And we got a lot of drivers out here for 200 laps of intense hard racing around this 2.5 mile beautiful track. So I'm just getting ready for the race tonight, and it's just going to be an amazing race to watch. I can't forget that Evan, uh, Chris, and Hugo are over on the... Uh the alternate universe Daytona right now with the uh, the Pete guys. So uh, if you guys have multiple monitors or are coming over from them, we uh, welcome you to this race as well. And uh, definitely for them, uh, they're going to be finishing up rather shortly. And uh, this is always uh, kind of a fun little statement that we're going to start here. It's, uh, this is our, the start of our, our speed weeks, really, because we're going to be having uh, today's races uh, with uh, the Peak Series and then tonight uh, with, the, uh, with the Suicide Prevention League and then we're going to uh, have the RSR duels tomorrow, which will it's a private uh, deal with LSR TV, but then we will have our Daytona race the, the, the week after. So Daytona is already going to be in full swing. We'll also have the Super Speedway Cup Series. So no shortage of Super Speedway action here on LSR TV right now. And Brandon, uh, really just really cool to kick off this, uh, this uh, the start of the racing season for uh, just about everybody who doesn't race normally like we do with the leagues, and so it'll be, it'll be an, uh, another uh, fun race to watch here tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we do know that the super speedways can bring their own set of challenges here. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a wild card in, uh, in that aspect. Yeah, it definitely is a wild card, and we're going to expect that, uh, well, I'm gonna be. Saying, I'll say that it's hard to expect who's going to win because uh, there are some drivers that we will know in here, and there's gonna be a lot of drivers that we don't know uh, just because this is uh, this is a league that we don't really cover too often. Uh, basically, once in a blue moon, these guys will reach out to us, and we'll have uh, an opportunity to uh, share uh, share the uh, the drive for suicide prevention with everybody, and then also uh also have a good fun running with everybody so around two minutes in qualifying left let's see if we can grab somebody who's currently going out there for a lap if we can trying to find perhaps let's, let's see if we can go with carl zimmerman who's on his first lap here in turns one and two in the number three uh chevrolet going down in turns one and two and I think the one thing about this track that we'll be expecting later is that, uh, you know, the bottom is definitely, as always, will be your preferred line, but momentum's a big thing, too. Um, you know, we, this 2.5-mile oval is uh, such momentum-based, and, you know, just about every racer knows that, but uh, it's always fun to watch these guys by themselves, too, and qualifying to see uh, different lines and such. Yeah, absolutely, and watching these guys take different lines and watching different lines form over the course of the race you know you're always going to have that bottom side or that top side run throughout the race this is 200 laps so at some point we might even see three wide racing uh, possibly in the middle maybe towards the end I, i'm not thinking towards the beginning because at the beginning you know it's 200 laps and you're just going to be one of want to log uh, some laps to get to get a feel for the track and to get a feel for how these cars drive in the draft because they're always making changes in this service so 
you know, it's, it's going to be hard to adjust throughout the rest of the race, and you also have that dyna uh, dynamic track that you have to take into account for, too. So these drivers get a couple laps. You're seeing Zimmerman do his second lap here tonight. I have no real particular reason other than the fact that he was one of the only drivers really to be running a uh, hard lap at the time, so he'll cross the stripe, and we'll see where he gets going. It looks like he right now is at least 10th place right now on the grid, and so... Uh, for now, that's where he will sit with a 47.956. And something that I find interesting is that they started in practice with 10% uh, usage. And then everything is carried on forward as it would on a normal race weekend. Um, and of course, uh, this it could be anywhere from 10% or more than that. So uh, as these guys have finished up qualifying, we'll go through your full running order or your full starting grid here as we get rolling on for tonight's make chester proud 500 with the drive for suicide prevention on the pole gonna be jason martin in the number 46 razor chevrolet and then you're gonna have the 49 of hunter truel he will start in the second position follow them is going to be uh, Byron Rodney starting in the third position with Austin Fairway in the fourth position with Jack Ritchie starting fourth. And I will uh, he'll go to Nolan Neiman who will start starting in the sixth position. Nicholas Schmig will start seventh. Vic Bloom starts eighth. Caleb Weekly will start in the ninth position. Then Carl Zimmerman, we just talked about him. He will start in the tenth position here, Brandon. Shane McCurry starting there in 11, 12th is Abbas Laddock. Then it's Jeffrey Fisher, uh, Dan Oliver starting back there. Gary Weaver starting behind him, Matthew Allen right behind him. James Miller back there, and it's Williams Van Alstein, Will, uh, Liam Sheen, and Kyle Beck rounding out the field in 20th. So that's been a look at your LSR and TV starting grid, these guys. On to about half a minute ready to go. Some of them are still waiting to get into their cars, ready to grid up. Getting a few just a uh, few little stragglers of these guys getting here and we're kinda of waiting for your pole sitter to eventually rise up and get into this car to uh, to lead these guys to the field. I'm sure they'll do that in a little bit, but we'll take this ball material. Yeah, he does I uh, does eventually grid up and uh, we will take a look at your track facts here with Daytona. If you don't know Daytona it's kind of like where you where you've been out a kind of deal you know the track's been around for around 60 years and uh, kind of kind of a staple on racing especially on the oval side um, 2.5 miles uh, large bank uh, large banks I mean if you're any avid race fan you've either wanted to go here for a race or you've been there or you've really wanted to go uh, I've been there myself and it's been really fun to uh, to go there I've not been there to actually see a race but um, it was really cool to see it for myself, uh, one of the most historical places of all of racing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, a, a magnificent track, really, and an uh, awesome place to go see a race. So these guys right now getting stacked up, doubled up, and uh, they'll get ready for the green flag here this time around. A few things about this track is uh, as we're going on the back straightaway, that uh, backstretch grandstand is no longer there in the uh, in in real life, but it is there here still in the sim. So a few things that are that are still unique to the sim that we see in the 07 version as well, and this is basically the post uh, the post 2007 version, and it's cool to see some of the things that are no longer there. We still have tracks that are no longer around, and it's really cool that the iRacing service provides those as well. But here tonight, we're here at Daytona. You are here with LSR TV, and we are glad to have you along for our double header here tonight as we get this thing rolling. 20 cars are going to start this race with 200 laps, and Jason Martin, he will round these guys to the start of this race. Won the pole with a 47.883. He looks to hold that lead for hopefully as long as he can. Green flag is out, and we will start here for the 200 lap race, 500 miles of make Chester proud 500 and here they go diving going down into the turn number one here shortly heading down into turn number one right now still gonna be two by two 46 uh, Jason Martin still heading out there to lead right now 75 machine right behind him as they head out of turn number two down the back straight away 
good side-by-side -side action right now. Looks like the seven. That looks to be Abbas Ladak. He's going to be only going to the bottom. And looking at the very front of this field, the 46 to Jason Martin went up to the top. Maybe to go and block just for a tiny bit, but had to come right back down. And lost a lot of momentum to the 75 of Byron Rodney, who just right got, got right up on the back bumper and just gave him a big, big push right there. And that outside is not too bad right now. The 22 of Austin Bearway. He is trying to figure out uh, figure out how to get on the back bumper of the 49 right here. It's inside line like it always has. Just goes extremely quick. Extremely quick. Uh, obviously the shorter way around this track. And uh, these guys are pretty spread up. But here goes the 46 looking at the top. Now go to the bottom. The 75 up the left. But truthfully, I didn't think he had to. He had the position there. But this is kind of all sorts of whack here on the bottom side. And they're checking up pretty hardcore. And looks like it all the way back to the 69 to Shane McCurry. He may be trying to do a little bit of a traffic break down the back straight away that side by. Didn't quite work out for him. The bottom line had a huge st uh, check up there. Top side has the advantage now and now out front is the 49 machine. The 49 of Hunter Jewell. He will get the lead here on the front straightaway. This will be his first lap led of many. And the 46 will have to figure out how to get right back in with him. And we've got three wide in the middle of the pack. 26 going right through the middle. He's making it work. That's Matthew S. Allen. He's able to get through a lot of drivers right there and gets past the number three of Carl Zimmerman. And that was a fantastic run through him or through everybody right there. And that'll put him in a great position to start running for this lead. And he's going to go all the way down to the apron. Not sure uh, what's going on there, but I think he thought the five was going to block him the whole way. But here goes the seven here to the top as well. And that was late. I'm going to go to the top, now back to the bottom, all over the place is where he's at. And a couple of these drivers are really going up and down to the track quite often so you're really going to have to keep your eyes on a lot of these drivers but he's going to try and pass on the outside that's a seven of Abbas Ladak he's looking for some momentum but really what these guys can do behind these two leaders is start to form up and get a big push and they should be right back up right back up in the thick of it one thing I'm noticing right now, guys, is the amount of aggressive lane changes going on right now. As it, obviously, we've seen the uh, the high line kind of fall off a little bit here, but it looks like they're trying to kind of gain back onto the low line now. Some guys trying to make it work, and they're wrecking, wrecking down the back straightaway. Big wreck. That's going to be the 75 of Byron Dorodny, and oh my goodness, just about every car is in this one here at the beginning of this race, and holy cow that was a big big wreck one car up and over still it's vic uh vic bloom who's up on his lid right now in turn number three we're gonna get a replay of exactly what happened and we're seeing it right here on your screen and it happened in front of these guys right here but a massive crash and these guys had nowhere to go and here goes the 75 in the outside wall here in just a moment but big big carnage here in Turn number four, or lot number four here tonight, and what a big mess we have. Man, oh man, yeah, that was uh, about half the field right there, and uh, 77, Vic Bloom going for a wild ride upside down, barrel rolling down into turn number three. So right now we'll pace under lap number five, and uh, fortunately for these guys, they will have a reset here tonight, so uh, anyone that was involved in that accident will be able to take themselves and uh, go down pit road to get that uh, that car fixed. The only bad thing about it is we're only in lap five. These guys are going to have a really long race to have. And quite frankly, they got to be really cautious here the rest of the race because uh, already having a reset used at this point, I mean, that's half the field, if not more. You're going to have to come down and, and use that because uh, they're not going to be competitive the rest of the race if they are that slow. So we'll see if anyone comes down pit road in this first group. With the 26 of Matthew S. Allen will come down pit road, and so will 22 of Austin Vayer Way, and the three of Carl Zimmerman. He's got some front end damage. 25 of James D. Miller. He's coming down as well. He's got damage. Uh, I think uh, everyone behind him coming down pit road is just coming down from some strategy, uh, trying to get some fuel tires, everything they can need. Actually, there's a couple other drivers that have damage as well. Kyle Beck, he rolls through his pit box, and looks like uh, the. 83 is also going to come down and get some, uh, some repairs done. There's a lot of cars with damage here. That was uh, that was quite the big one heading down the back straightaway that time. By looks like uh, uh, the cars without damage are choosing to stay out. Obviously, very early in this race still, but. Uh, 
but guys, you know, there was so many aggressive lane changes going on. Uh, unfortunately, that kind of racing, this or only, it was bound to happen. Yeah, I could definitely, uh, I can agree with you 100% there. It looked really chaotic already at the beginning of this, and I was I was concerned that we might have something like this fairly early, and uh, definitely was, uh, definitely was, uh, Something in the making, but I'm taking a couple of looks at it and seeing um, what exactly started that one. And uh, we saw it a couple of times. Uh, that would be the seven coming right back down on the 75 here on the back straightaway. It just wasn't clear and just flat out hooked him. So um, not sure if he just didn't check uh, check the bottom or whether he thought he was clear or not. But um, really too aggressive, too aggressive a move here earlier on in the running. So right now we pace on lap number six. Here's your top five. To be Hunter Truel with Jason Martin in second, Nolan Neiman in third with Jack Ritchie fourth, and Matthew S. Allen in the fifth position. And driving with this early precaution, we've got strategies all over the place. Drivers sliding through the field, and Matthew S. Allen, he's gone from 16th to 5th. It's been a good good run for him, even though we're not even 10% of the way uh, or 1% uh, of the way uh, through this race. Yeah, and that's that's the benefit for drivers hanging out in the back and just lagging a little bit behind. You know, they're saying we got a long race and I don't really want to get caught up in anything early, so I'm just going to hang back for a little bit. You know there's bound to be a caution at some point within the 200 laps that we have. So he just played it very cool, hung back enough where he, if he saw a wreck, he'd be able to uh, dodge it. And now he's up in P8 from P16. So a very smart move by him. And as Brandon was saying, yes, there is a lot of aggressive moves happening this early on in the race. And they need to settle down and get their bearings so they can start start racing good and start logging some laps to get close to that 200 lap mark. Two drivers are a lap down from that accident. That's going to be Vic Bloom, who was upside down. And Gary Weaver was also involved in that. And so... He is, uh, he's still out there on the track, but I'm pretty sure he's got himself a faster pair. Uh, he was not able to get to the front of, uh, he was not able to get through this one uh, without having uh, any, without having to stay down pit road for an extra lap. So, so these guys roll through turns three and four, and we'll get ourselves a restart here in just in a moment. Number 49 of Hunter Jewel, he got the lead not too long ago before that to green flag, and that had to deal with the fact that the uh, 46 went up to block, and it just did not work. So we're going to see a restart here. We're going to see the paint scar come down, and the green flag will come out. Green flag in the air. These guys are getting going once again, and we'll see... The green flag action. The 46 is able to dive down deep early, but look at the 72. We I think got a huge run here on this restart. It was really quick, and he's going to be able to get back uh, back past the number uh, 46 here on the outside, which is fairly uncommon unless you uh, start going before the start of the uh, the start of the green flag here. So the 72 of Jack Ritchie, he's going to be getting a couple positions off of this restart. He's going to be right back in second. Yeah, absolutely. And we had a little bit of a stack up on the bottom side, a little bit further back, probably about three cars back. That was uh, Liam Sheen that we had a little bit of stack up with, but everything sorted out. And now we are single file racing. Lap number eight coming to lap number nine. Hunter Truel still leading the race here. Jason Martin right behind him. Now we have the number seven of uh, Laddick up top, all on his lonesome. So he's going to want to find a way to get down there as he does right behind Sheen. Now everybody's going to start working together. He's starting to make that train, but now you start seeing that number seven creep up a little bit further into that top side, trying to get that number 12 to go with him. You know, if I was at number seven of Ab uh, Abbas Laddick, I would, uh, I would just stay in line because uh, it didn't work out for him last time. So. Yeah, it's just uh, just stay in line there, buddy, and just uh, sit right with them, and it'll be a lot easier that way. And so the 59, I think, is just going to uh, bow out of this one, at least for right now. And he's getting off like close to the outside wall. Oh, my goodness, 59 almost uh, almost scraped the wall right there. So Abbas still right now in the uh, sixth position, actually. So uh, despite being just involved in the accident, he'll still be right up here with these guys. And like you said, single file for the time being. And these guys starting to sort some things out here. Getting 10 laps into this book here as, as we will roll in next time by. And this is where you start to uh, start to kind of see these guys calm down a little bit, I'd say. Get the, uh, the jitters out, but I'm 
mean, I will still say when these drivers, your driver's not having a restart or a reset, it's going to be, uh, without a restart, a reset, this is going to be uh, real iffy for some of these guys. As we see a battle, it looks like, for the 11th position, that's going to be Carl Zimmerman trying to find, uh, fight off Byron Rodney, who started from third. He was actually the driver who got knocked out earlier in this race, but he's uh, got that fast repair and he's back in it. Yeah, the guy is back there, uh, you know, kind of separated from everyone else right now. They're kind of on that weird in between. The car in front of him has a little bit of damage. They're going to try to make their way around now, now heading down into the corner. Looks like yeah, that side by side. vehicle. Uh, yeah, sorry. side by side. Oh, you're fine. Side by side with these guys and the three on the outside. He's getting a little push here from the 75. He should I should help him out. I say a little, just at least a little bit. And this is the fight for, like we said, just outside the top five or outside the top ten. And Brian Rodney wanted to go down and get in front of him, but looks like uh, Dan Oliver still has some damage from earlier on, and uh, he's not going to take that fast repair, which might actually be a really good thing for him. Bad thing is that he, right now no one's wanting to work with him, and uh, if he has no one to push. And he's going to really, uh, really fall down. But uh, a lot of these drivers catching the uh, apron here in uh, in the trioval area of the racetrack, and um, that's not very that's that's not good if we see them do that later because these tires are going to wear wear down pretty good later on in the race. So uh, definitely something I'm looking at right now. And these, these guys have to uh, try and stay off the double yellow line. One for passing, and two just makes your car really loose in the corners. Yeah, watching that number 59, at Lee and Sheen. He's having a little bit of troubles keeping his car under him. I've seen him, but go. The competition can't be replaced, and that's what brings people back to the racetrack week in and week out. You know, really enjoy dirt racing. Feels good to, to get in the car, and we have uh, you know great cars and engines and things at KKR, so it's uh, it's nice to drive a, a fast uh, sprint car. Couple of separate lines developing three wide action on a turn two. Craig Kitzer, Casey Kane, and Garrett Pittman gonna get it. I think the differences between you know NASCAR and the sprint races on dirt is just a much different mindset. The way you drive your cars, the, the setup, the feel you're looking for. I think one of the hardest things to tell as a fan is when you're watching a race, whether it's a NASCAR race, a dirt race, is just what's really going on in the car. With iRacing, you can get the way that the track's changing, which they've done a great job in how the track changes throughout the night or throughout the race. Welcome back to LSR TV's, co LSR TV's coverage of the Make Chester Proud 500. We have a small little difficulty there, but we're back racing, and the battle for the lead is real fun to watch here with Hunter Jewell still commanding the lead over Jack Ritchie and Jason Martin. Those three have been top three for the last few laps after we went back green flag racing. They're about to hit on to lap 20. It's also been a fun battle to watch just inside the top five and outside the top 20, uh, or sorry, 25, top 10 uh, on both uh, on both sides of that. But right now these guys are fairly spread out and watching this battle is for the lead. It's actually the most contested one is while watching uh, Hunter Jewel fight against Jack, uh, Jack Ritchie. Yeah, it looks like a uh, couple guys here up towards the front starting to catch back up. And uh, looks like it's up to about well, four cars up there now. I thought there was a couple more behind them, but it uh, looks like they've actually fallen off once again. Yeah, I'm starting to look throughout this field, and literally the only the only drivers that are really, uh, really in a good draft in this top four. And then you've got Abbas Leidek 
he's kind of by himself. You've got Austin, uh, Austin Verway. He's kind of getting uh, getting picked up by uh, Rod, uh, Byron Rodney and Carl Zimmerman. So they're going to be getting back together in a line. And I think Caleb Wheat Weekly is going to try and get back on this train. Although it's not easy to do in this draft package, even if it's just straight drivers. So these guys trying to get into a pack and. If any of these drivers start to get really packed up, I mean, there's only two packs, really, um, or three packs, really. And if any one of them starts to really hook up and just push and not fight for position, they should be able to catch any number of these drivers out here. And that, that would be really fun to watch. But I'm coming back and watching uh, these guys here around 9th, 10th, 11th. Uh, Kyle Beck is pushing James D. Miller, and Miller is going to be catching Gary Weaver. And Weaver is watching Shane McCurry and William Van Al uh, Alistine. Uh, fight for position here. Uh, I know that they're trying to get to pushing here soon, but these guys do have a full fuel load that I am aware of. So they should be uh, should be uh, able to make it for quite some time here on fuel. As it uh, looks like uh, Caleb Weekly here up here inside the top ten, he's getting in on the inside of Byron Rodney for position here out of turn number two. Yeah, heading down the back straight away now. They're going to be side by side. 77 machine just behind them. 75 machine now slips back just a little bit. And uh, Caleb Weekly pulls out in front of that little battle that they had there. And they'll go single file racing once again. And Austin, uh, it makes me wonder, did that first wreck kind of scare these guys? They don't want to really race too close to each other right now. Yeah, I think that in the front group really just got off to a great start. I mean, they're still, I mean, they're just pulling away from everybody. Just, um, these guys aren't working together in uh, and drafting together to catch them. And uh, the guys up front, I mean, they're still fighting, I think, at least a little bit. But they know if they can get, they can pull away, they can at least make moves that aren't going to really hurt them too much. Uh, I mean, these guys are two and a half seconds behind everybody else. And they just, I mean, I'm watching here, uh, looking at the number seven, the 22. Uh, these guys just are really needing to work to, uh, work to nose to tail and get some drivers packed up and I'm looking at Carl Zimmerman too and Carl Zimmerman and the three almost got together there in terms of the three and four and almost uh, almost got each other but here is uh, the number seven of Adam Sladek kind of leaving the door open for the 22 and this isn't going to really help their cause to catch these guys up towards the front so Sladek is going to be on the outside here and he's going to get a good push from the 75 into turn number one and Here's the push. He actually lets off just a little bit as to not push in the corners. We know that's basically the only rule in Super Speedway is uh, don't push in the corners. And so the 75 let off just a little bit as to not do that. So we've got a pack here. They should just, they have the numbers to catch this front pack, even though they've got a lap, tr uh, lap car, but they really need to get a line. They should be able to catch these guys up front. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like a couple of guys maybe started to get a little bit impatient, uh, you know, instead of letting the 7 machine kind of drop back, uh, fall, fell out of line just a little bit, instead of letting him drop back a little bit, uh, they kind of jumped up to the top, tried to get a little bit of racy, so, and now we've got these guys two by two, and they're not going to be able to make up any ground on Lee Pack. And they're falling off dramatic, or drastically right now. They are going so far back. They are over three and I, almost four seconds behind just by going two by two. And they are getting positions right now, but at the same time, uh, it was, uh, you're here to win the race, right? I mean, I would just assume that all these guys, you know, even though they're not working to uh, to, to help another driver win the race, or at least you got to try and help themselves out a little bit as Latex is going to go down to the bottom and 22 clips the apron, three is going to go to the top. So uh, these guys... Trying to, tr I tried to figure something out. I'd say of, uh, for trying to get back to the bottom, but uh, Ladek was able to uh, cross down back to the bottom with a push from the 75. 75, I think, has one of the stronger, uh, stronger runs out of, it, of these drivers in this pack and is able to really push. But Ladek, I'm unsure if he let up the gas right there, but this pack is really, uh, really not going anywhere right now, and I think it's a shame for as many drivers are right here in this group. Yeah, them being a two-by-two two right now is not helping the case for sure. Now heading down the back straightaway, they're still going to hold two-by-two two right now. These guys, uh, I think if they were to get single file, as you were saying, Austin, they would be able to make up some ground on that lead pack. But, uh, you know, the lead pack, those guys watching the numbers right now uh, in their black boxes and, and just, you know, watching these guys fall further and further back are, are absolutely loving this right now. 
And this pack behind them, just a tenth place and behind, they're actually starting to catch these guys, uh, which would will be really interesting to see if they're going to try and push the bottom or the top or do what they're doing and and uh, be a little bit disorganized here in, in this turns one and two. But they're doing a good job of catching them. That's Shane McCurry in the number 69 and the 20 or the 62 of William Al... Uh, uh, Van Allistein. I'm gonna try and get that name right. So when he goes and watches it later, he'll he'll at least appreciate that, that I tried. But this these two cars alone, just the two of them are catching this pack right here. And right now, they are actually going to uh, they are actually getting closer to this pack up front, and they're now starting to get single file. So this is getting to be really helpful right now. And I'll tell you what, these guys right here are catching. Uh, okay, are, are catching up pretty quick, so we're gonna go radio broadcast style just because of the fact that we are having a slight problem with the sim still as we did earlier. We're gonna have a slight reset on our end, but we're gonna give it to you as if you were listening to it on the radio. So, still side by side here with the 75 of Byron Rodney on the inside, Avis Laddick, and he is going to be pushing the 22. And we're not gonna talk about those front few guys because they're still single file, but this big pack right here is starting to get a lot bigger. 22 leading the charge. 22 out front of this thing right now. 7 Machine, Addis Laddock, maybe looking at the high side, not going to be able to get anything done. 75 Machine kind of stuck outside by himself right now. Blocks the uh, blo the bottom line, kind of blocked by the 12 right now. The gap may open up, but that's going to close real quick if he doesn't slip in there. Addis Laddock looking to the outside as if this was a, a pass for the lead, but I mean, he's actually going to try and push him down just a little bit. Tries to get a little bit of air off the right side of the 22 this leaves everyone uh, leads everyone to come right back on the bumper and they're going to be pushing now from outside and inside seven on the outside with a push from the 75 of byron rodney on the inside you've got the 22 and the 12 and this is bringing everyone behind them you've got the three of carl zimmerman who's bringing in the 30 or the 62 of william Al van allistein and more more of these guys are coming in you've got the this uh, seven laps down, Vic Bloom, he's in this thing still. And then, and then you've got Shane McCurry, who is in 10th position still, trying to uh, trying to do something. But this is a big, big pack. They are five and a half seconds back as they cross lap 29. Yeah, the pack starting to gain more and more cars right now. Now heading down into turn number one. Still going to be two by two. 22 on the low side, seven up on the high side right now. Low side being held on by the 12 machine back there, uh, right behind 22. Couple guys ducking down to the apron right now. Maybe a little bit squirrely as they head down the back straight away. Still two by two. Abbas Laddick is going to go down to the very bottom of the track and clear this bottom line. But the 22 gets in the apron, kind of has a little bit of a bobble, but able to keep it up. But the 70 goes up to block the 75. So, yeah, this back is going to stay this way for quite some time if uh, these guys continue to fight for the, for the top position in this pack. I mean, I don't know if these guys realize, but this is not the race for the lead. And I think they would be, it'd be wiser to, to try and get out front and start to push. But look at this outside lane. It's starting to really get good here. 20, the 62 of... Uh, William Val Allistein, he has actually pushed the 75 of Byron Rodney to the front of this big group here. And so that has uh, that has got these guys a lot more uh, momentum. What we have failed to mention, though, is that we have had a lead change. And it happened uh, a few laps ago, actually, with a push from the 46, the, 12, uh, the 72 of Jack Ritchie. He went to the lead with a push from... Uh, Jason Martin. So those that is a battle that is uh, that has changed for the lead. So now the 72 will begin to log laps as our new leader, and so that is uh, the biggest change. Uh, that is the big change for uh, for the lead right now. And well, uh, we've looked at that, and we'll kind of go right back to where we were because it's still a dogfight right now for this for this back racing here. And it's fun to watch, but I just and I I know these guys can get to the front if they just work together in a single file line. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Austin, and the thing of it is, is uh, these guys, uh, once again, they're starting to pull some really aggressive moves. It's going to be really tough for them to not only make their way up front, but to stay racing clean and green as we see almost a bumper hook to the three car from the 69 machine that time by. These guys really got to be careful. They're doing a good job, at least at the moment. And Keeping it real fun for us, real exciting as they still continue to go side by side. Abbas Laddick basically is leading the charge of this front pack. No matter where you find him, he's trying to get back to the lead of this pack. And uh, to be fair, if these guys come down pit road together, I think they're actually going to be at a pretty good advantage. However, they're seven and a half seconds behind. So uh, if you come down with this big pack, if they communicate that they're going to come down, which will should, 
uh, which should happen here in the next uh, 10 or so laps. This will be pretty good for these guys. So starting to only have two drivers on the outside lane. That's the 62 of William Van Allistein and the 12. That is going to be Caleb Weekly. But I think we saw somebody hit the outside wall just a second ago. And uh, that would be Vic Bloom. He crushed the outside wall, I believe. And, uh, he's already seven laps down and he just did it on his own. And I don't know if he just wouldn't put enough wheel in it or something. But yeah, he's going to be really slow now. He's going to lose the pack off these guys. And uh, really, really unfortunate for him, at least at the moment. So that's going to be... Uh, every lead driver is basically in this pack, except for your first four drivers. And you've got a few stragglers uh, a few seconds back. You've got Jeffrey Fisher. And you've got Nicholas Schmig. You are in the 14th and 15th position. And uh, they're actually not too far away from being a lap down as Gary Weaver has fallen a lap down. James D. Miller has fallen a lap down. And they are actually uh, behind this pack, at least being Gary Weaver. He's behind this pack right now. One thing to notice about the second pack right now, it looks like they're trying to get back to single file formation as I say that. 75 machine kind of jukes out the 7 of Amos Lanark. Now he's going to look to the bottom, leaves the 7 machine out to dry up on a high side, heading down into turn number 1. A couple of guys maybe going to try to go with him. Looks like Lanark is going to be freight train on the inside. This will be the first time Lanark's gone on the outside and it's not really been, uh, not really been good for him, but he's going to get a good push from the 62 here. If they're able to get them to the bumper of him and Vladek getting a great push from Val Val Van Alistine. I'm trying to get that name right, but Van Alistine giving a great push. Uh, and the 7 almost went to the outside wall, but he's trying to close in the middle of the 22 and the 69, and he should have the opening right now if he wants it, but he doesn't. He's going to keep going to the outside. And Someone's really fast, basically, where he's at. The 69 wanted to go to the bottom and he went to the top and almost wrecks right there. He got really loose in the tri -oval. That was really scary for the moment. Yeah, good save by him and good catch. That there was car up on the high side right there. Almost caused a wreck. Not quite there yet. But uh, yeah, Adams Lana trying to make his way back up front. They've got the numbers up on the high side to get it done once again. A couple of guys getting really aggressive as they head down the back straight away, about to head into turn number three. Big push to the third number three from the 69. And this is getting really antsy with these guys. They're going up and down the track fairly quickly. and. I'm um, getting really nervous about this back right now. It was really single file for a good portion of it, but they're starting to uh, trying to get double file back as if it were for the battle for the lead here. And so the number seven of Abbas Laddick charges on the outside with the 75 still on the inside. And you got to wonder, uh, as a driver on the inside, what, what do you need to do to, to make sure that outside lane isn't strong? Because it is strong tonight, at least with these drivers. It was in the last race that we were watching here on LSR TV with the peak drivers. And so... 75 of Byron Rodney just needs some help from some guys at the bottom and he will prevail in the bottom and the 7 just needs to do what he's doing the 62 needs to give him a big push but here comes the 7 here comes a push to the 16 or the theory from the 69 and now there's no push on the bottom I'd say the top side should be good they're getting way too dang close in the corner here yeah, that was near contact there. Now Abbas Lanak slips down. He thought, I thought he was going to slip down there at the bottom line. He kind of changed his mind there last second. Now up on the high side once again, going for the lead. Not the lead of the race, but the lead of this pack now. Once again, 70 mach the, the 7 machine out front. A, a couple really close calls there in the process. And yeah, right behind him, a lot of close calls between the 3, the 69, and the 12. And a lot of them are going below that yellow line on in turn three and four, and they need to keep their cars up there. They'll be a lot, a lot faster, I, I'd have to say, and they'll be able to stay locked up out of the corners. Here comes the 12, almost in the outside wall. That's Caleb Weekly, almost crushes the outside wall, but was just uh, just close enough not to hit it, and so he'll stay on the outside. And looks like the 22 of uh, Austin Veraway, he'll stay on the. Uh, he'll try and look for an advantageous position to be in. And then you've got Gary Weaver, who's really hoping for a lap back here. He needs to stay with these guys and hope that they don't wreck in front of him because uh, right now, if he were to, if the caution were to come out, uh, he'd probably have it in front of him. But if he misses everything, he should get his lap back. Um, uh, or he's probably just hoping for something small, something little to happen in front of him. But here comes the battle for uh, the 10th or the 8th position with the 69 on the outside here. These guys still fighting and 
Looks like the 62 is going to go to the outside as well. Start, going to give a little bit of a look to the, uh, to the lead just for a second, just because, I mean, we're basically giving the leaders no attention, which is very odd. We don't normally do this, but uh, they're still running single file, and uh, pit stops should be coming soon for these guys, but they're also going to catch a pack of drivers uh, all on the lead lap working together, but uh, they're not fast enough uh, as these three guys are really, uh, really, really pushing it. Uh, they have some damaged cars in it, so... 72, Jack Ritchie leads Jason Martin and Hunter, Hunter Truel is being the top three drivers. And these guys also are in the top five, so they have fast cars in qualifying as well. And so um, as pit stops are occurring here soon, we will probably uh, monitor these guys' progression. I'm sure they're going to communicate together when they're going down. One thing to point out real quick, Austin, the 75 machine did go down pit road, but all by himself down there. So uh, he'll be at a huge disadvantage of that aspect. Dan Oliver went down pit road and spun out right here. And so uh, he was uh, going to be a lap downer just just a little bit ago. So he spins out and hits the cone. So the dreaded orange cone gets its first uh, dice uh, dose of, of carnage there. The 69 also comes down pit road. And so... He's coming down alone as well. And this is uh, these guys need to come down together, uh, otherwise they're going to be really slow all by themselves. And you got to got to kind of see what these leaders are doing. And look, like 72, it's the 46 and the 49. As you're seeing the replay of uh, Oliver having the little spill, and here comes the leaders. Leaders coming down pit road. 72 of Jack Ritchie. He will lead these guys to it. They're going to come and hit the line right there all around the same speed i think for these guys it doesn't really matter how fast you enter pit road just as long as you're not the last guy and you're not too far behind uh just so the draft is, is working good and here we're gonna see how these guys uh enter the pit in their, their pit stalls and see what their kind of service they're gonna be doing so it looks like those guys down on pit road now still waiting for a couple of others to head down that way as well. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, pit stop cycle not quite through yet. Uh, Ab uh, Abbas Lanock kind of leading a couple guys around here right now. Number seven of Abbas Lanock looks like he's leading the charge for a few drivers. We'll see if they come down pit road anytime soon. No one coming down this time around. And so Abbas Lanock, he will lead these guys. Uh, his first lap led and so that'll be at it number seven leading one lap and he'll have Caleb, Caleb Weekly and Byron Rodney in tow as well they're gonna try and uh, make their fuel run really worth it right now as I think him and a few other drivers did come down pit road to do something uh, during that caution period and they've only had one caution it was a big one but they've only had one caution so as they continue to long laps they are on lap 42 at least these leaders are as they're starting to split some lap traffic uh, traffic trying to get out of the way as best as possible but uh, i'll tell you that it's a kind of a land a landmine because uh there's one lap up top one lap up bottom uh, down bottom it's gary weaver on the top that's the five of nolan neiman on the bottom so these guys trying to split around them and trying to get to uh, get to the best point uh right now here crossing lap 43. Heading down into turn number one right now. Still nobody going down into the pit road that time by. But, uh, you know, as you said, trying to uh, maximize their fuel run right here. But, uh, you know, uh, Austin, how much do you really think this is going to spread out the field here? I think it's going to spread it out pretty massively, especially since that big pack we had they used to. They didn't, uh, they didn't come down together. They came individually and... I think that's going to be their downfall because the top three came down and uh, you, you can even go back and see that the uh, 72 is with uh, Shane McCurry. Uh, so he's actually, Shane, Jack is actually just, uh, he's still a lap down. I, uh, I have to wonder exactly where the other two drivers are going to be. Uh, looks like uh, I think the number 46 is another driver, but he's in fourth place. So I'm not sure what happened to uh, it's number 72 of Jack Ritchie because he was in the lead as they started this one. So uh, I'm just real curious about what is uh, what is going to form of this race because now one of our leaders has uh, has fallen a lap down. The seven machine just ducked way below the double yellow line down the back straight away. Not sure what that was really about. It looked like maybe he got really squirrely there down off the corner but it was really hard to tell looks like he may be coming to pit road this time locks him up big time heading down into pit road 
Oh, wow. We got really close to the inside wall and almost uh, made an unsafe pit entrance right there. So, uh, Seven's got has to be really careful, but uh, watching him come down pit road, it looks like he's all by him, his lonesome, which is uh, not going to be uh, not be good if he doesn't find anyone out there on the track to, uh, to draft with. So, he slides into his box and he's able to get the right sides and the left sides up. And hopefully, he can find a partner out there. And that's kind of. It's one of those things is these guys, the rest of them go down the back straight away, uh, hopefully finding somebody to help help you out. And James Miller's going to come down pit road. Oh, way too fast. There's no way. Yeah, so uh, the 25 of James Miller comes down pit road as well. And then uh, he will more than he will definitely get a pit, uh, pit road penalty for going too fast down pit road. And oh, the three car spins it out on pit road. Oh, mo. Oh. Didn't hit anything though, so he's really lucky right there, but he's gonna have to get some new tires there. My oh my, yeah, I think he uh, may have gotten a speeding penalty out of that as well. Locked him up, coming into pit road, almost rear-ended whoever was in front of him, and uh, just kind of uh, went for a long slide there down the pit road. Lucky for him not hitting anything. You know, I don't think he's going to get a penalty for that because he was actually right at 50 miles an hour and went well under. So I wow. think he's going to be fine. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. And uh, the only thing that's going to really be problemsome is the fact that he's going to uh, have to get new tires on that machine. And so uh, seeing that the number 25 of Miller and number 12 of Weekly, they're going back out to pit road. This is going to be very spread out field. I mean, I don't I don't see very many drivers really being coupled up in big pack uh, in big packs, except for this one right here in let's say the fifth position that being William Van Allisteen, uh, Nolan Neiman and Byron Rodney this is our biggest pack of about a few drivers here uh, as we are getting closer to the one quarter distance of this race and Dan Oliver right now I think is in a good position to get his lap back but William Allisteen Van Allisteen is at a good good position just because of the fact that he's with a lot of drivers at least right now and uh, looks like Jason Martin is working uh, closely together with the 49 of uh, Hunter Jewel. So they need to get a lap car or somebody to help them out because they should be caught by this pack. They went from 9 seconds, maybe 10 seconds plus, to around 6.5 seconds behind now. Yeah, so um, the field definitely spread out around Daytona right now. And uh, you know, maybe for the viewers who aren't super familiar with super speedway racing and, you know, think it's big packs, uh, uh, well, that's generally the case, but after green flag pit stops like this, it, it can really mess with the order uh, of these guys and get them all spread out, especially with the different strategies that we've had here tonight. Yeah, that's why you're seeing two cars at the front of this one, and they are being caught. So we may see a big pack by the end of this one because those two front two drivers are uh, are single file. But these this big pack, I said it earlier, if they are able to get single file and start working get working together, they will start catching that pack. And so they are now uh, they're not lollygagging in any form uh, any form or fashion. Uh, right now because they've got uh, they got a lap car in the middle of it but it is going to be so helpful for the 62 to keep, keep pushing on to the 83 and the 5 of Neiman he's going to be pushing we haven't talked about Neiman or uh, Neiman a whole lot we talked about Van Allistein quite a bit because of his push to the front he's from 18th to 3rd right now which is a really good a really good improvement right now uh, but uh, Nolan Neiman He's uh, hardly been talked about our, uh, at all tonight, and yes, they are definitely catching these guys. It's about a few tenths per, uh, per lap, and, and just give it some time, and they'll catch them. And so we'll give them that time, and we'll give ourselves a small break as we'll take uh, just a little bit. We'll be back here on LSR TV.
Welcome back to Daytona here as you are watching the Make Chester Proud 500 with the, oh, excuse me, with the drive for suicide prevention here. Leading tonight right now is the number 46 of Jason Martin, followed by Hunter Truel, and then a lot of lap down cars who are uh, just recently lapped down. And then you've got a pack of drivers that are hungry to get their, uh, get their chance at a win here tonight. And that would start with the driver of Dan Oliver, who's a lap down. He actually spun it onto pit road. And then you got William Van Alstine and Nolan Neiman here just inside the top five with uh, Byron Rodney. Uh, they're trying to push their, well, their ways back up to this front groove. But I mean, they've got to push hard because they've got a lot of lap cars helping that front two, the front two drivers right now. Yeah, absolutely, and we got about six cars in this lead pack, and then, as you said, behind, you got these two cars fighting, or excuse me, yes, these two cars trying to get back to that lead group. They're about uh, seven seconds behind, and I, they're just going to have to keep on pushing because throughout the pit stops, as Brandon was saying earlier, it just shakes up the whole entire field, and you got to work your way back up to the front. So uh, you see... A good majority of the actually half of the field a lap down at least and then the rest are just fighting for position so you see the, the drivers coming down the back stretch and now Jason Martin and Hunter Truel uh, leading that pack as you see them going across uh, the lap traffic as he sticks up to the high side Ben Allistein and company they are starting to catch this front group here Brandon and uh, uh, they're doing a good job of it. And I, was, I was thinking at least at some point that those light cars would be helping. They helped for a little bit. They basically put a, uh, just pushed them, just pushed them forward just a little bit. Uh, but they are losing them, but not as much as they were there. Mainly just about a tenth or so each lap. And so right now, uh, these guys really have to work at it a little bit harder if they want to catch them quickly. And the uh, the first two drivers of this pack, uh, Van Allistein and Dan Oliver, they're doing a good job pushing, and Nolan just can't seem to get to the bumper of either of these guys. And I think he keeps, uh, I think he actually keeps checking up a little bit before he gets to the bumper. He could, he could probably, um, he could probably be a little bit less cautious and get up to the bumper and start pushing. But I think uh, I, I can't blame him right now because it is still early in this race to be doing any kind of uh, uh, terribly aggressive driving. So he's st staying right there. He's actually getting pretty close to him right now. So this is actually going to be a great draft for the five and everyone in front of him. Yeah, absolutely. They're doing what they need to do right now, staying single file, not trying to make any aggressive moves right now. They're just uh, trying to meet their goal to catch that front pack here. Uh, you know, these guys, right, as of right now, uh, the chances of getting a caution aren't that large. So these guys just doing what they got to do, catch the front pack, see if they can get racy once they get there. But they really have to try to contain themselves, and they're doing an excellent job of that right now. The Jason Martin will still continue to lead these guys with Hunter Tool. And this is a lot. This is a large pack with lap, some lap traffic, and they're still fighting for position. I'm watching the number six or the number 99 of Nicholas uh, Schmig try and pass the number 60 of Jeffrey Fisher, and uh, you know these three guys, including uh, Liam Sheen, uh, they're fighting for a lap back. Uh, so you've got to imagine that these guys, uh, they're they're trying to trying to get the lap back into the hardware, or try and get it back and in some sort of sort of fashion with the lucky dog and uh you know they've got the, they got to fight the leaders if they can try and get the, the hard way which is not going to be easy and uh getting lucky dog will probably be one of the easier ways to do it sad thing about that is that uh, they got to fight each other still for position for that because the top nine is on the lead lap and i think they're going to gobble up another driver here shortly uh yeah it looks at the Flatic. he's in ninth place he's about halfway across the track 27 laps down so they'll probably catch him uh, at some point in the race and uh, going to go around James D. Miller here on the outside, and that was a little close for comfort. Or three wide here at Daytona, they hit each other. That's the six. That's the 49 of Hunter Truel. Oh my goodness, that was a late drive to the outside by the by the 49 with the 46, and definitely should have started making his arc a little bit. But uh, they made it out of it somehow. I don't know how. I held my breath for that whole entire turn. I saw that car at the bottom. I was like, he should probably get up to the high side, but stayed down low and everybody made it through semi okay so we're back racing again you got two wide action behind you between the number 60 and the number 99 so before position and then as well as the number three that's carl zimmerman and number 99 now getting up to carl zimmerman and trying to battle for position but 
if we want to look back or look forward or backwards, whether however you take it, Van Halenstein of the number 62 machine, he started 18th and he's now third. So that just goes to show if you stick your nose into somewhere, uh, somewhere where you're trying to get into position, it, it'll pay off for you because or you're just hanging back and it's just really working out for him and he's in third place so we'll see how well he can uh, fight the way through uh, this uh, uh, group of cars coming up as you see number 77 down low oh my gosh it's getting very close yeah these light cars don't have to get out of the way per se by and by that i mean they don't have to to go anywhere particular but they need to keep their line and all, a lot of these lap cars are actually doing just that and I, I think the leaders are expecting them to move and um they're saying exactly where they are and i think uh, the, the worst thing to do is a lap car is to suddenly move and to try and get out of the area out of the way so and i think you're watching this line here the number 83 go to the outside so this is actually going to be really helpful for them uh, you know, for them to be uh, going outside very cleanly, very, uh, very good pass around the 25 here. This is probably one of our cleaner, uh, cleaner attempts at getting around some lap cars here, as it's been really, really dicey uh, throughout the race. So, uh, Dan Oliver, he's he's getting a humongous push for these guys. Remember, he's a lap down, so he's basically been uh, the consequences of his uh, of his pit road issue. Uh, very, they're still going to hurt, but they're not going to be nearly as bad. Uh, because he fell in the clutches of this, this pack that's really that's really helped him out so uh, funny enough the leader of this pack is not the second pack is not uh not on the lead lap but still benefiting from it and so uh william and allison he's in the third position uh just looks really really funny uh, when you when you start to take a look at it but they have absolutely eight into the lead of these uh of these, uh, of these leaders and they are only four seconds behind as you're watching no one name and right behind these guys yeah absolutely oh, something that's been brought up uh, quite a bit tonight these guys they all they gotta do is stay single file they've got the numbers on uh, on the guys in the first pack here and uh, if they stay single file if they keep doing exactly what they're doing right now holding the patience holding the single file holding the way that they're racing right now is they're, they're uh, heading down the back straight away and uh, you see a lap car getting out of the way for them uh, they'll end up catching the, that lead pack in no time remember the lead pack consists of about five or six drivers martin leads i think he's led all uh, most laps tonight Actually, I don't think he has. He's only led about 17 or 18 laps, so uh, he'd be close to it, I think. About uh, 20 or about 10 more laps, and I'd say he would be pretty close to that. But second, second place is going to be Hunter Truel, and then you've got Liam Sheen in 10th, Carl Zimmerman in 11th, Jeffrey Fisher in 12th, and Nicholas Schmig in the 13th. But just remember, those guys are lapped down. And this is a big pack that uh, when they start getting to get single file now, they kind of get their, their lap back. So I think. That's what's holding them back a little bit, but they do have some moments of big pushes because they lost two tenths, but they've been going back and forth just a little bit. They are uh, kind of having two, three car tandems right now. The first three and then the second three. Um, and something I have not thought about, at least until right now, is um, the, the engine temperatures for these guys. They haven't been that close to really, uh, to really have those issues, but even on a long run like this, being in second on, uh, being second in a pack of driver that's pushing it can be problemsome uh, here uh, in the late, in the uh, in the mid goings of a race like this as we cross lap 64 here and just watch the uh, I think that was the 59 that caught the uh, caught the double yellow line and did it again right there and uh, this is really close for him to have it a disaster if he does that again but uh, able to keep it straighty uh, here as we uh, are on the back straightaway. Yeah, and on the most tracks for NASCAR, it's all about uh, tire wear, but. For Daytona and Talladega Super Speedway tracks, it's all about fuel mileage and keeping those engine temperatures down. So we have to keep an eye on that as you see just a whole bunch of drivers trying to do different strategies as they come into the pit road, trying to maybe go for that short pit or long pit and trying to stretch their fuel mileage as much as possible. And as you were saying, got to watch those engine temps as you see the number 49 looking to get some fresh air into that engine and trying to cool it down a little bit because you can't have an engine expiring only on lap 66 out of 200. That won't be really beneficial to you. So you got to be watching that as you see him getting a little side, uh, like half of the car on the 46 and half of it into fresh air. 
so that that'll give it some draft still but still able to keep the engine under control we're watching number seven of Abbas Laddick, uh be uh, very much out of the way on the top side, which is kind of what you prefer. But look at the bottom uh, side. Oh, the 50 just basically, or the 60 basically cuts the nose off the 99 an inch more with him. And he would have been in the inside wall. He would have spun himself out. So uh, really, really close for the 99 and the, fit and the 60 right there. But uh, 60 tried to get some momentum with the number seven right there and just did not happen. But uh Laddick should be able to get lose a little bit of a draft from these guys, but I think more importantly, uh, with these guys coming in charge, they've got about a few more tents that last time. They'll be able to use Laddick as uh, some momentum uh, here in just uh, in just a little bit if they're able to uh, catch him in the left, which I do think is I think is very doable. And then Dan Oliver uh, will actually be uh, really looking to get a position because uh, Oliver will be going against uh, Laddick right here. So you're seeing that long shot of Laddick. He just passed the camera, and then here is the number 14 of, of Oliver. He'll be getting that position, so going from 14th to 13th to pass the number 7. So that will be uh, that'll be really fun to watch as they start to get closer uh, closer and closer to each other. As it's only about 3.3 seconds now between this front pack and the back pack. Um, it's getting closer. It's starting to fade a little bit. More drivers are adding on to this front pack, and uh, I, I mean, there's not really many other drivers that are uh, that are not in this front pack. You still have the duo of Caleb Weekly and Jack Ritchie, who are seventh and eighth. Ritchie must have had a problem on pit road, and so he had to. Uh, he's now having to work with the 12. And then you've got James D. Miller. He's got some right rear damage. He's three laps down. Tell you what, running by yourself is not very fun, and he's been doing that a lot of this race, and he might have some company here. And they're gonna probably whiz right by him on the outside. So yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So he's got some front end and rear end damage, which is uh, never too much fun. So he's trying to hope for something to happen here for him. And then you've got the duo of Shane McCurry and the 77 of Vic Bloom. He was on his lid earlier on, so that's you trying to figure out uh, their way to uh, get themselves out of a big hole. Shane McCurry trying to get his lap back, so. And then we're back to the two groups that we we're talking about. 3.3 seconds still between the two groups. Yeah, absolutely. And now you see just how these drivers are just going single file. You see, sometimes they're going double, sometimes, most of the time they're going single. Uh, you're just gonna want to keep that single file pack just trying to trying to get away from that other pack as well and uh, you know if, if you're going double file it starts to slow you down a little bit so you just got to keep that angle going straight the number 60 99 nearly get into each other that was very very close now coming down the back stretch and you know it seems to get a little bit dicey coming out of turn two i see that's where the most trouble happens and you know they're, they're probably just trying to set themselves up for a long straightaway and trying to get as much ground as they can covered uh because that's really where you can make the biggest draft because that's the longest part of the track so now you see them coming in the tribal for lap number 70 as the number 60 goes up in the number 99 sends them up the track a little bit but able to keep it all under them yeah, it looked like uh, Schmig in the 99 uh, was going to the outside and actually looked like he was about to hook the 60 right there. And uh, he was very close, but he's, I think, actually going to lose this draft a little bit if he's not careful. Uh, he lost a little, little bit, but I think he's actually going to start to start reeling them back in as uh, Jason Martin continues to lead this pack. He's led about 25 laps here tonight, which is a good amount. And he's trying to obviously continue to lead and uh, win, win the race from the lead. And, uh, or, you know, one of the biggest things in, in the Super Speedway style racing is uh, you want to know where you're going to be at. With, with this way the race has gone, I want to be in the lead the whole race. And uh, that's where Jason right now is. And uh, you sometimes you think, you know, I want to be at the back. I want to kind of, you know, uh, stay away from the wrecks. But right now I think you've got no choice uh, with the fact that uh, the front pack is uh, really where it's at. Even when these guys do catch, uh, or if they catch it, because it's only 3.1 seconds, I think pit stops will happen before then. Um, you know, when pit stops happen, I don't think they'll be there quite yet, and I think that's a, that's a really important fact to note because um, we will have another big spread out. They came back together, but I don't know if we'll see that again. 
uh, here in the light closings of this race. The 99 of Nicholas Nicholas Smig is actually, I saw him really dig into turns three and four. He's trying to get under the 60 right there. Just doesn't have the momentum. Uh, he really wanted to cut the corners a little bit to get under him. So you can definitely tell you he wants that position right now. He's going to the underside. He's there. He's there. And the 60 is going to have to give it up right here. So he left the door open just a little bit. Here comes the 99 on the bottom. Yeah, that was a very, very aggressive move there, or what would have been by the 60 machine to attempt to block that move. Now, these guys heading down the back straight away, the 99 ended up with that position in the end of it all, but uh, you know, guys, I'm looking further back, and uh, that second pack, they've gotten awfully close. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Only three seconds back, and once they hit about the two to one second uh, second back area, they're going to start catching the draft of them, and so that'll be really important for them, knowing that they're going to be getting uh, some draft of their own. It's going to be a lot easier, and Oliver will, won't really have any any issues at all with it, and so uh, really going to be fun to uh, it's fun to see that if that does occur. Uh, they did come in about lap, uh, lap 40, so you just back double that up and you get around lap 80 here. Though they did have a caution that um, that let them have a little bit more, a uh, little bit more in that one. But they they actually lost two tenths on that last one, so that front pack actually did a pretty good job of pushing away just a little bit. I don't know if that has to do with anything with Nicholas Schmig or yeah, because he's on the bottom of the three right now. He wants that lucky dog position. Look at him go. He's on the very bottom of the of these guys and. He's got the draft from the guys in front of him, so these guys leaving the door open. He's just taking it. I mean, there's, I think there's no reason for him not to because uh, they're just they're kind of leaving the door open for him. He's gonna have to really worry about these lap cars, but if he's able to keep going, he's only got one more driver to go like, to be in the lucky don position. Oh, we got him spin the 69. Oh, 49, big big wreck. Oh, oh that's my. the leader. Oh no. That's the driver in second position. Hunter Troll gets turned by a lap They're car. still wrecking back there. Oh, oh no. I thought it was over. Machine. No, 59 machine slid into that as well. Big, big wreck. We'll take a couple looks at what happened here, but I thought it was over after that. And, uh, we're gonna see a second, uh, second look exactly what happened. So, looks like the 59 goes up the track and just uh, just gets to the left rear, turns them. It's something that you're not supposed to do in those corners. And, uh, and the 49 goes right back up in the 99. He was on such a tear right there. And, and then we're going to watch these guys slide a little bit down the straightaway. But uh, you said there was some more action, so we'll see if we can get an uh, see if we can get an angle on all the rest of that. Uh, what happened? But the uh, 59 look machine it looks like the 22 uh, kind of came in there. Nowhere to go. Rear ended uh, the 59 of uh, Liam Sheen and uh, sent him uh, spiraling once again. All right, we're taking a look right here. So the uh, they're wrecking up there right now, and that's Abbott. Uh, Abbas Laddick, who's pushing the 75 right there, and you can see these guys going all over the place, and yeah, it looks like somebody's in the outside wall in the 22. Oh, no, yeah. There's nowhere to go. That's That really stinks for the 22 right there, so that will bring out our only our second caution of the night, which is um, good for uh, good for them, but the only, only thing about that is that that means uh, we have Quite a few torn up race cars here tonight. So the 49 of Hunter Truel, he'll have to take his reset. He's still in second place, which is <laughs> quite remarkable. But uh, reset's going to have to happen if he hasn't already taken it uh, here tonight. So Jason Martin, all alone by himself, doesn't have to worry about coming down to pit road at any rate of speed. Probably one of the cleanest cars out there. And you're going to see some guys taking some lap uh, or wave arounds here probably. And Jason Martin comes down, and so a lot of other drivers getting some damage fixed, getting their tires, uh, new tires, and getting fuel for themselves. And I think Jason may have went through a stall. He did. I just will buy a little bit, but they're going to put the jacks up on it anyways as everyone comes down for service. The thing that I feel bad about the most is Nicholas Schmeg. He already used his fast repair in his first incident, and now he has to wait for the pits to come out. And now you see the race off pit road 49er hunter true will get that race off pit road followed by van alston or yeah van alston and then nick nolan newman uh jason uh, martin still in his pit stalls getting a little bit of uh, damage repair most likely and you see well, he's been clean all race i mean i definitely know how this paint scheme looks when it's damaged and it's definitely not damaged by any means so he's just sitting there so uh 
I'm, I'm really not sure. And the reason I say that for the folks at home is uh, it came to my surprise when we came here that I actually made this paint scheme and he's racing it. So it's kind of funny uh, to see that. So uh, he did not get out of the car. He just uh, he was just sitting there. So uh, really, uh, really fun to uh, or really not not fun, but really weird to see him still stay in the in the box there. So your leader is probably going to be the guy who was just wrecked. And that would be uh, Hunter Truel. There in uh, there in there, but uh, seeing seeing if anyone else is uh, out there in front of them, no. But drivers in front of them are going to get their lats back, and so that'll be Hunter Chuld and William Van Alstine, Nolan Neiman, and then Byron Rodney. That's going to be your top five, uh, more than likely. With I think uh, Jack Ritchie, who will really take a breather from that one, as he uh, probably was really really open for a caution. Yeah, and now you see Hunter Truel back up in front, and we're going to re-rack and restack him, and then go green flag racing, and you know, still over 100 laps to go, and just good racing all around, and they're keeping it single file for the most part. There's some parts where you're, where they're getting a little dicey, but for the most part, keeping it clean, only two cautions. They get close at some some points, but uh, they're able to keep it, keep it straight, so... Uh, Pretty good racing so far. At this point in tonight's broadcast, we do want to remind you that tonight's coverage of the broadcast is going to be brought to you by Joel Rule Timing. And whether you spend time behind the wheel on the sim, if you're on the spotter, uh, spotter stand, or if you're going to be a crew chief for one of these drivers, Joel Rule Timing is your go-to software for all your iRacing scoring and analytics and you can get yourself a basic download at joel-real-timing.com and uh they uh they are very uh, it's a very helpful software if you're going to be using it to test uh, test yourself on the uh, on the sim between uh, now and the beginning of the next iRacing series uh, for anyone doing iRacing Open and Fixed Official, uh, which will be coming up here shortly as the NASCAR series gets going as well. The NASCAR Cup Series as it models itself after that. Uh, so, right now we're seeing if the paint car is going to go uh, to one degree or whether it's going to uh, whether it's going to continue to pace these drivers. I have a good feeling this will be the one to go here. And the pace car's lights are off, so we're going to see some lap drivers get their laps back. And Hunter Truel will take control of this lead despite being heavily damaged in that last uh, little incident. And so the driver's getting the lap back. I also will say that uh, a few of them, Austin Way, he's going to have to save some fuel somehow. And James D. Miller, he's going to have to do the same. Vic Bloom, these guys are going to be coming down pit road fairly shortly. But uh, um, I, I don't agree with the call, but I think they're hoping for a quick caution so that they can... Uh, they can uh, conserve because if they, if they have to pit during green flag conditions, it's going to be over for them uh, by a large amount. Yeah. So, Go sorry, Brandon. Go, Go over. Yeah. <laughs> As you were saying, Austin, uh, lights on the face car are out. These guys stacked up, doubled up, and ready to go back green flag racing here. And uh, uh, yeah, the field's quite shallow from what we started with, but these guys going to put on a heck of a show as is. So we'll go into turn number three here as we pace for the third time tonight after our second caution as Hunter Joel will try and uh, try and take advantage of uh, of this lead that has been given to him. He has led a total of 29 laps in the 46 of Jason Martin. He had led around the same amount of laps as well. So um, those two drivers trying to see who can lead the most. But realistically, the only lap that really matters is at the very end of this race, which is not even halfway yet there. So Hunter Joel, he will get to command this restart. The 62 is on the inside. Iracing official pace car is down and away in the 49. When does he go? He goes right now. Green flag is in the air and we are off back to the races. 49 taking a good start and able to get out in front of the number 62 machine. Number 62 is going to try and look to that bottom side, but the number five of Newman or Neiman is going to come and take that position away. So the number 62 of Van Allison has to find a different place to go and then we have a yellow flag. Caution's going to be out for another wreck here in turn number one. Looks like we have a couple spinners 
And yeah, it looks like the 69 got tagged from the 25 of James D. Miller, and it just spun him around. And he corrected back up into the 80. Oh gosh, 83 and 77. That was a vicious Athletic. hit. Yeah, that was terrible. And I think there's a checkup, and just then him right around. So that puts us back under the caution flag once again here at Daytona, guys. And, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about maybe a couple of guys hoping uh, for the quick yellow to come out, the, the guys that were trying to get their laps back, and, well, they have it. Yeah, that's definitely true, and there's going to be a few drivers that are really happy to free fuel themselves up, but uh, some guys that are going to be really, uh, really upset. And we're watching the replay right there, and I just think uh, you, you, I, you, I think a lot of drivers are going to want to blame Miller for this one. But uh, I mean, there's a huge checkup in front of him, and you just—that's just something that, that does not happen uh, typically on a restart in turn number one and two. You typically just flat to the floor. I mean, and if you do lift, I mean, it's typically just a little bit, but. Miller just was completely caught off guard. I cannot blame him for that in any sort of way because whatever's in front of in front of him just started slowing down and um, yeah, that, that was just really odd. So I can't really I can't really blame it, but you can't really blame the rest of the field either because they were obviously slowing down for some for some reason. But um, these drivers weren't even up to speed quite yet. So nonetheless, we are under caution on lap number 80, and I think this is or 81, and I think this will be a good time to take a step aside, and we'll be back here in just a little bit as we've got about 120 laps left of racing. Why are we doing this? Me too. I'm almost out of popcorn. Let's go. Hi, I'm Ryan Priest. I'm driving the number 20 JGR Toyota Xfinity car this weekend. Really great opportunity here at New Hampshire at my home track. Over the past few weeks, I've been on iRacing, practicing a little bit here and there with the modified and the uh, NASCAR Xfinity car. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great tool for me to, to kind of get used to that stock car body again and uh, be prepared for the race today. Well, yeah, it's, it's a mile long, so um, the draft kind of plays into effect here with the modifieds, punches a big hole in the air, uh, and we run restrictor plates. So uh, it makes a big difference. Um, just really fast and, and, and it's our Daytona. So that's what's great about it and uh, we have a fast car for tomorrow. I think the biggest thing is they're just, they're heavier cars. The tire's a lot different and the way you go about setting them up is a lot different. They use all four tires more than a modified where we typically drive off the right rear, you know, so. Well, actually it's funny. Uh, I raced NASCAR race in 2003 before iRacing came about. And then when iRacing came about, uh, my friend Kevin Iannarelli, who works at iRacing, kind of told me, hey man, you need to switch over to this. And, and when I did, I was like, oh my God, this is like real life. Uh, so I started using it as a tool of mine to, to really prepare for, for modified races, whether it was Stafford or Thompson or Loudoun, uh, Bristol. And then obviously the Xfinity Series last year, going to road courses, trying to get laps and, and use it as a tool that can get me as prepared as I could be without actually doing it. So it's been great. Gauges. We'll give you four tires. Three, two, one, now. We're done. Get going.
Welcome back to the Mick Chester Proud 500, and I think we had a little miscue, and now you know how well me and Trevin sing, so uh, we had a little bit of fun there while we're having a little bit of breaks. That's actually what we do when we have commercial breaks. We just uh, whistle and, and doodle a little bit, but uh, back to serious stuff. Uh, Hunter, Hunter Truel, after having that issue of being spun out while being in second place, currently leads over Nolan Neiman and uh, William Van Allesney as we're about ready to go green flag here, Trevin. Yeah, absolutely, and we have still a good amount of racing left to do. We're only on lap 84, coming to halfway in 15 laps, and we only got nine drivers on the lead lap, and one driver, one lap down, then one driver, two laps down, one driver, three laps down, so on, so forth. So we got a lot of drivers trying to get their laps back, and uh, they're just going to be still hard racing to the end of this, and you see Hunter Truel still out in front, followed closely side by side to uh, the number five of Neiman. So coming to turns three and four, and I, the the assessment that I'm making is, I know I said it before, but the most action is in turns one and two because coming out of turn two, they have the biggest amount of time to make up time coming down the back stretch, coming to the green flag. Oh my goodness, we just saw the 59 just hit the 46 on pit road, or uh, not pit road, under the green flag and we not even green yet, so it uh, looks like a little bit of hit from the 46 is great bumper, and we're going to go green here, but yeah, a little bit of an issue there for those guys, but uh, yeah, that was not good to see out of, this, out of that, so uh, green flag conditions now as they go down to the turn number one. A um, big, big split between these two groups back there. A couple guys, uh, uh, they were trying to work their way around some damaged race cars and almost about had a wreck back there. Uh, every, everybody gets through clean and green right now. Yeah, for right now, these guys are starting to uh, to to start to sink a single file, but it looks like the fight for the lead is still on. Zicky 2 is uh, probably not going to win this one as he's got no help from any from anybody in the 75 is I think back where he wants to be right in a good shot to have his look at the lead that's Byron Rodney in the number 75 and he has been up he has been down and he is back up to the front right behind the 16 uh, the 49 of Hunter Drool. Drool has been there basically all day long and someone one of these guys are going to try and uh, try and stop that from happening and number five of Nolan Neiman also there so this little pack starts to snake out and Jack Ritchie he's looking to go to the outside he's going to have some help from the 46 of Jason Martin this outside has been pretty stellar at times but we have not seen a battle for the lead on the outside but this is looking to be perhaps one of them so the 46 and the 20 and the 72 go to the outside it's looking pretty good so far yeah absolutely and now I wanted to make a point of the number 62 of William Van Alstner uh, he got freight trained on that high side. He got left up to dry, and now he went from the front all the way to the back of this lead pack, and he's going to have to have a lot of fighting to do as well. We have four drivers that have pulled it behind the wall, Nicholas Schmeg and Shane McCurry being the most recent of them all, but still up front. We have a about an eight-car uh, charge right here, and number 72. Oh, he's going to turn him! contact but still able to keep it straight now three wide down the back stretch oh man, my goodness man. that was really really close between those guys and yeah he just ran right in the left rear of right there in the straightway and so that'll uh, change this lead picture immensely as the 75 just almost uh, almost crushed it we might get a replay of that here in a little bit but we're side by side for the lead jason martin wants a piece out of it once again as he was there not too long ago went down pit road and i uh, may have had a chicken sandwich and a drink and went to the restroom before he went back out there to, to kick some butt as he's right back there to the front Yeah, I'm not really sure how everybody got away with that and managed to save their race cars there, but uh, unbelievable. Jason Martin will go back to the lead. He's going to try and take the 62 with him, and he does. William Van Allenstein who is, ab is able to push the 62 or the 46 back to the lead, and wow, <laughs> I was worried that, you know, he went down pit road, he lost his lead, but uh, he's... Uh, he must have been down pit road that long for some reason, and uh, I guess he's able to uh, to get down uh, down pit road and uh, figure something out. Maybe game plan, maybe strategy, but nonetheless, got a huge push. That outside lane, this guy's got to take notes and think, man, that outside lane was really, really good. Um, and the bottom may not be where it's at if you want to get to the lead that quickly. So, 
He's able to do it, and uh, the 62 is going to try to do the same to him, but he's all alone. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it without any help. He absolutely will not. You need help to make a draft work or anything to work on a super speedway. You cannot do it by yourself. He's going to get freight trade again. You think he would have learned his lesson coming uh, from that first incident that happened on the restart of this, getting freight trained, and now he's freight trained again. But, you know, it's... It's... Everything that happens on super speedways it can happen in an instant. As you see, now the number 62 falling back again. He has a little bit of front damage, so that could uh, hinder him uh, from being able to keep up with this pack as you start to see him fall back a little bit more and more as the race goes on. Uh, so that's not going to help him out at all, trying to keep up with this lead pack. He was in the back, now he was in the front, then he was in the back of the lead pack, and then he was in the front of the lead pack, and now he's in the back again, falling off pace. So Super Speedway can change in an instant, so keep an eye on everything that's happening on this track for the rest of this race. And the 75 that had that issue, and you, you'd think he has a lot of damage, and I think he's got a good, recent, a good decent amount of right same damage, but I don't know how he didn't wreck the thing because he's still out there he's gone back to the clutches of gary weaver who's in the seventh place position and then uh caleb weekly is right there behind him and they've got uh vic bloom is going to be behind them but he's probably going to lose them pretty pretty good but the nc drivers are basically the rest of your lead lot drivers and they are over four seconds behind uh, getting close to five seconds behind this top group this is really all that's left is these front five guys and then a lot of lap cars that are uh spread uh, dispersed throughout the field and so we're going to continue to watch these uh, top five guys here and looks like uh, at least at the time being trying to uh, hold their hands right now as they, Jason and Hunter will continue to push. It's been these guys all night long. These guys are the ones to beat right now. And you can throw Nolan, uh, Jack, and uh, William right here in, in it as well. But uh, really, really these top five drivers are, are, uh, are really kicking some butt tonight and they're uh, solidly in the top five just by themselves. Absolutely, just single file racing up here right now. No moves trying to be made here as we speak. Uh, uh, still not even halfway yet though, guys. Uh, that'll be coming up in uh, about eight laps or so. Uh, but uh, these guys right now just trying to play it safe. The field reduced by car counts greatly uh, right now. But, uh, you know, single file racing all around it looks like. A yeah, single fall for now. Jack Ritchie trying to get to the outside of the five, it looks like, and maybe get some help. He's there on the outside of uh, being Nolan Neiman, and so he's going to try and see if he can get around them to the outside, trying to pinch down just a little bit, and not able to get uh, not able to get a push. But the 62 has been a really good pusher all day. It kind of has a lack of. Uh, has had a lack of people pushing him, but he's been a great pusher tonight. He's got some left front damage from earlier on, and so he's going to try and give the 72 a push that he wants to get to the lead. And remember, uh, Rich, uh, Jack Ritchie was a part of this top three group, and so he had an issue down pit road. He's trying to get back to it here in, in on lap number 93 as he's going to get a little bit of a push here, I think, from the 62. 62 is going to try and do that, and I think there's a little bit of an issue in front of him. He's going to be able to get the advantage here. This is going to get weird here, guys. It looks like uh, the 72 is going to drop down to the bottom, and this, I don't know what happened to the front two guys, but uh, that looked like it could be bad there for a second, and so they basically just get around the number five. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, when it, again, when you see an opportunity present itself at a super speedway, it's easy to take advantage of it, as you see that number five machine of Nolan uh, Newman, uh, Neiman, excuse me, have a little mix-up. The 72 and 62 took advantage of that, and now they're back up in the battle again for uh, the second place. All they need to do is get side-by-side -side with them, and, you know, they'll have a race for the lead, and... But for right now, they're going to keep it steady at least, maybe, I, I think, until at least lap 100. But, you know, we, we've seen a lot of aggressive racing, so maybe even not till then. But, you know, you got to also start thinking about your engine temps, your gas mileage. And, you know, if there's going to be another caution, you, you still got nine cars in the lead lap fighting hard. Uh, but you, get, you just got to keep everything in the back of your head and remember that you're still racing with other cars. It's not just you guys out in the field. You know, you could be going, doing great up here, but back in the another group or uh, tandem, all you have to do is have one wrong hit in the corner and your car is going around. So you got to keep those all in the back of your mind. And 
being able to capitalize on anything that happens. Yeah, definitely. And Jason Martin, uh, really where you want to be in this kind of situation with this kind of racing right now. And uh, these guys trying to, uh, they've been trying to get around him, but uh, they've got to have a big push. And with uh, this uh, few amount of drivers, if you get a push on the outside, there's no one to push on the bottom. It's going to be uh, pretty easy to pass on the outside. But I think right now these guys just trying to, just trying to stay where they are. They've got more than 100 laps to go here in this 500 mile race. And uh, I think that's what they're doing right now is going to be smart. They do have some drivers two by two in front of them. Those are some lap cars. And so just kind of hold your breath right here as they're going to try and navigate through this side. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here, guys. Oh, boy. They're going to go to the bottom. So two lap cars, three by uh, three wide. Uh, so uh, they'll, uh, they'll, uh, they'll get around that. But uh, those two lap cars, they're not even fighting for position. So definitely those guys should have... Should have got out of the way a little bit, but uh, either way, they let him through, and so it looks like they'll be uh, they'll still be single file here for the top five positions now. Man, oh man, that was a really close call there, but fantastic driving by everybody there. Uh, going back to what you were saying before, Austin, with this few of cars uh, in a group, it's really, really hard to make any uh, make any ground uh, on on the lead car. Uh, Especially with only three cars here, it does not look like the 46 and the 49 are going to be separating from each other anytime soon. So it looks like these guys, as of right now, are just going to be riding as they head down into turn number one. Yeah, riding for the time being, probably riding until the next fuel session. Uh, because one of your biggest ways to, to gain, uh, gain some speed is just to come down pit road and do a better job than your competitor. And then hopefully have somebody at the end there with you. But uh, right now... Uh, like you said, just kind of uh, kind of waiting, I think, at this point, as they're getting closer to lap 100. Just the top five, the 12 seconds in front of the, every, of the rest of the field being Caleb Weekly and everyone behind Gary Weaver in the seventh position. He's, uh, those two are working together, but uh, two versus five. Actually, we do have a little bit of a push to the outside, that being 62 of William Van Alistein. He's going to the outside. He's trying something out, and the five is going to try and go with him. We've seen this outside lane be really good, but no one's been able to push the 62 as good as he pushed. He has pushed anybody else. So these guys right now trying to uh, trying to just. Uh, I, I think uh, the 62 wants to, to be aggressive, go to the outside, but I think in in the end he's going to be better off just holding off because he's got that left front damage that's going to really hinder him, and I I just don't think he's going to be able to really be the one to uh, to be pushed to the front. I was taking a look back at, I saw Brian or Byron Rodney disconnect and I was looking back and I saw he had decent position so I was taking a look and he got tapped and he was coming to pit road and the guy behind him just tapped him and went sideways and then when he got to his pit stall he just disconnected or took his car behind the wall so uh, having a rough night as well so now we're back, now we're down to eight cars in the lead lap and uh, you know this front pack is still doing fairly well and uh, number 46, Jason Martin, still in the lead. And we've seen Hunter Truel and Jason Martin up in the lead the whole entire night, coming up on more lap traffic. Now, one car goes to the high side, one car, okay, now he's going up to the high side. That could have been really dangerous as well. Uh, but we still have that five car battle going to the lead. And now I believe that those cars are, oh no, they are lapped down, okay. So now we're seeing uh, the, the five cars still starting to lose a little bit of ground on them maybe he's going to be able to come back to that draft but we'll see how that works out for him in the end there are seven cars now on lead lap and so that would put uh, the only two drivers that are not a part of this front group to be uh they are now hitting they actually are now going to be getting close to the start or to turn number one they are now in turn number one where that old large patch used to be whenever there's that uh a little bit of uh, brick that came up through uh, through the uh, through the track. So right now we hit our midway race break here, presented by iRacing. We'll go through your full field rundown as they stand. Jason Martin currently resides in the number one position. Hunter Tool, he's in second. Jack Ritchie, he's in third position. And you've got William Van Alistein, he's in fourth. With Nolan Neiman in the fifth position. That's your top group right now. And you've got Caleb Weekly in sixth and Gary Weaver in seventh. They're still working together. And then the next driver would be Austin Verway. He's one lap, one lap down. And you've got Abba Flatta, he's in ninth. 
James D. Miller finds himself in the 10th position. And then going to the next few, or the next list of the drivers, you've got Byron Rodney in 11th, Liam Sheen in 12th, Carl Zimmerman in 13th, Mick Bloom in 14th, Jerry Fisher in the 15th position, Dan Oliver in 16th, with Shane McCurry 17th, Nicholas Schmig, he finishes tonight in the 18th position, and Kyle Beck and Matthew S. Allen, they'll finish out the field in 19th and 20th. So we'll take a quick break as we have crossed the halfway. We'll be right back here on LSR TV. You know, really enjoy dirt racing. Feels good to, to get in the car, and we have uh, you know great cars and engines and things at KKR, so it's uh, it's nice to drive a fast uh, sprint car. Cromwell, separate lines developing three wide action on a turn two. Craig Kitzer, Casey Kane, and Garrett Pippen going at it. I think the differences between, you know, NASCAR and the sprint races on dirt is just a much different mindset. The way you drive your cars, the, the setup, the feel you're looking for. I think one of the hardest things to tell as a fan is when you're watching a race, whether it's a NASCAR race, a dirt race, is just what's really going on in the car. With iRacing, you can get the way that the track's changing, which they've done a great job in how the track changes throughout the night or throughout the race. Just to try to capture it and let the fans play it and realize, like, man, there's actually a lot going on. And you can't always see that when you watch a race. So I think it's pretty neat. It's, you know, enjoyable for me. But at the end of the day, it's actually much of a simulation. And there's a lot of ways that you can learn from that. And, you know, early on, it was neat to look at the cup tracks that I was going to, places that I had never been. So I think it kind of gives you a head start. Leading into weekend, it's pretty real life, and that's pretty neat. Welcome back to Daytona and the Mick Chester Brown 500 for the drive for suicide prevention. Jason Martin continues to lead. Gary's led quite a few laps tonight. That would be going to lap 52 of 
go over our 52 laps at Hazelag as we have crossed over the halfway point in tonight's race. And we do want to uh, do want to give a big shout out to our friends there at uh, G uh, Global. Ra Gosh, dang it, I messed it up. Red Bull Gr Global Rally Cross, and uh, we kind of shortchanged it a little bit, but it's a part of our uh, midway race break typically. And uh, if you use the promo code PR GRC. You can get on iRacing for three months for only $5, and that's a special promotion that iRacing is doing. Uh, so that's uh, PR-GRC at iRacing.com forward membership. And uh, you can get uh, the 07 version of Daytona and a lot of other cars. So the action we're seeing tonight, you can get a very similar experience, and you can also get a lot of uh, tracks. You can get a lot of cars. Uh, we used to use, we used to have a little saying of 11 cars and six tracks, or sorry, by the way, around 11, uh, yeah, 11 tracks and six cars, but that's no longer the case. So we are going to start looking here towards the front, though. Looks like the 62 has got under the 72, but I think we're starting to see some teamwork. Look at this; those guys start going to the top to help out the 72, and William Van Allenstein looks like he's not being helped in any sort of way. And yeah, this is uh, this is kind of a teamwork teamwork deal right here you saw that these guys are trying to help the 72 get some momentum here on the top side and they're not helping the 62 out any yeah absolutely and now you see just that little side by side action oh contact but oh my goodness gracious coming to the travel that is always the most dangerous part of of this track and you know you you're trying to you're trying to keep it straight but you know you got that little turn to do and when you get tight it just gets so close and you nearly have a little bit of contact as the 72 is going to dive it down down dive it back up and try to juke out that number 62 but now he's in a roadblock and the 46 and 62 are going to take those top spots away i'm really unsure what they're trying to do because the 62 pushed the the 46 to the lead and uh, then they, uh, they kind of let them out the dry right there. They're definitely uh, trying to make sure that he was not uh, not falling with them. So they went to the top side. So William was like, all right, I'm going to go to the bottom side. And uh, we went to the bottom side and just, uh, just take the shorter route. I mean, it's much better down there, even uh, even in this uh, type of racing. I mean, there's not that much. That, I mean, there's only four drivers here in this top pack. And they aren't... Uh, there, there's not that much drafting and not much pushing. So 62 is going to look to the outside just a little bit. And remember, the 46 has a little bit of damage on the rear end because of what happened on that last restart. So that could be a small parachute that the 62 has to, to go to the outside. So he's trying to look for an opportunity maybe to go to the lead here pretty soon. Heading down the Daytona Trioval now, 49, looking to the outside of the 62 machine. Now with help from the 72, these guys may be planning to go two by two. Only a group of four cars here, but uh, it looks like they may plan to get a little bit racy here, guys. Yeah, definitely getting racy. The 49 wants to go to the outside and try and get by both of them. He's led tonight uh, for a while. The 62 has not led at all, at all. And uh, the only, basically, the only driver in this top four that hasn't led is that uh, number 62 of William Valant, Van Alistine. So this little, uh, this small little pack of drivers here is, uh, is for the lead right now here on lap 113. And we saw the top be so dominant with the, six, uh, with the 46 earlier on. And so with the bottom two getting a little disconnected, Jason Martin is going to lose a little bit of momentum. And here these guys come. Here's a big push momentum. Here with the 49, but I think he gets a little too far away from the 72. And so they're going to maybe stall out just a little bit here, but uh, still side by side for the lead. And the 49's trying to push the charge on the outside. Yeah, you're getting a lot of side by side action. Four cars up in this lead pack. And, you know, it's they're all working together, basically doing some side drafting and then. Uh, tandem drafting, but you got that 49 and the 46 up in the front again. They've been dominant all race long as now you start to see the 72 drop back a little bit and then the 49 as well starting to get to the side panel of the number 62. Getting a little close trying to get that draft going for him again, but you got six cars on the lead lap now. Abbas Laddick being the most recent one to pull his car behind the wall and now Number 49 is going to jump down below the number 62 of Van Alston. And the 72 of Richard is going to hang tight behind him and make a single file race coming to lap 116. 
big push from the 62 to the 46 right there. We're going into turn number three, and Van Alstine does not want to be denied a shot at getting the lead, but right now four Chevrolet is here in the top four positions, and no one wanting to uh, no one wanting to make any big moves, but uh, the 62 right now a single file for these guys. And you go back and look for uh, at fifth position. That's gonna be Nolan Neiman here in fifth, and then you've got the 12. Uh, the 12 or the uh, yeah, the 12 of uh, Kayla Weekly, he is uh, uh, I'm unsure. Yeah, he's uh, actually going in the back straightaway right now. So um, looks like he's going to be uh, he's still running out there as well. But he won't uh, won't be too long before he's lapped uh, by the leaders who are still going down the back straightaway. So they're going to be catching him actually in the next couple of laps. I'd say at the very least, as they've got a lot of momentum here on this track. Something to point out, only six cars on the lead lap right now. Soon to be five cars going on the lead lap as soon as they uh, catch weekly. But uh, leaders coming into a little bit of lap traffic now, having to maneuver through those guys there. And the four of them all make it through successfully. Oh, up to the outside wall goes the 22 machine. Thought it was going to be a bigger wreck than what it was. He keeps it straight. Oh, my. Yeah, hits the outside wall right there and just was... Uh, just a little, I think it was just by himself. I don't think he had any help, and uh, perhaps was just trying to get out of the way, but uh, keeps it straight, keeps it out of the way, and him and the 25 are going to try and just uh, stay on the top side and get away from all all, all the guys trying to get her by him, but uh, that was basically all that was. It was just him in the outside wall, so they keep it green, they keep it clean, and they look forward to keep uh, to keep it going on. So replay on the screen of what, what happened, and so uh, yeah, you definitely just saw him getting the outside wall. And then he continues to go on behind the number 25 right there and uh, possibly get a, uh, a, a look at here at the front. Here is a, a 62 to the outside here. And looks like uh, they are going to fill that hole immediately here. The 49 is going to give a big push here to the 46. And out single file back. That 62 just cannot win here, it looks like. Now, it, the 62 is having such great opportunities. And then coming to that turn and turns one and two, just got a shot from the 49 and sent him up the hill a little bit and uh, now he's in the back again and here we come up on, up on more lap traffic coming into the trioval and uh, everybody's still keeping a single file number 12 that is number 12 of Caleb oh Caleb weekly and now he has gone a lap down as well so now that's going to leave four cars on the lead lap I, I believe so your top five right now is your top five but the one car is just a lap down now and that's going to be Caleb weekly so uh, these four drivers are the drivers that are on lead lap so um, they're still a couple together so uh, right there on your screen you can see uh, the one two three four five as they are right now and so uh, the 46 of Jason Martin leads the pack and here comes the 49 trying to get some momentum to the outside and he gets a little bit there and he's right there on the bumper and there goes the number I think that's the number 12 going down pit road unsure if it's for service or an unscheduled pit stop or what but he's coming down pit road we'll have to see what's going on with him so four cars out front of this thing right now guys uh, uh, we've seen them get a little bit racy every once in a while, but uh, it looks like right now these guys just trying to ride it out. Only on lap 120 right now, and uh, still quite a distance to go in this race. Yeah, no, a little over 200 laps to go, but they are all coming down pit road, and I don't think they're all going to make it. They oh, hit each contact. other. Oh, and they didn't all make it. Oh, no. Oh, they're wrecking on pit oh, road now. Oh no! 62 the 62. Around. Yeah, the 62 hits the wall, and the 64 has more rear end damage. And uh, somebody didn't make it in into the uh, into pit road correctly. I don't know who that was, but uh, we'll get a couple replays maybe of what happened. So these nine guys, and the 72 goes through his pit stall. So uh, add insult to injury. So we're seeing it on the screen out right now. They basically go four wide in the pit road. You just can't do that. And, so uh, the 62 gets speeding penalty. It's a speeding penalty. The 72 uh, then hits the 64 on the on the way in, and he's gonna have a, he's gonna have at least two penalties. So they come off pit road. The 64 is the first driver. He's gonna be your leader coming off pit road, and so uh, then the 49 comes shortly after. And if you're into these guys that are still out there, 
The one thing you need to do is find a partner, because there's uh, that's the only way you're going to go faster here in this race. Yeah, absolutely. And the number 72 pulling into his pit stall with this new model that they have, you can make with the uh, crews that you have now actually working on your car you have to line up a certain way so it takes the number 72 machine of jack Ritchie uh to take a few times to line it up uh as you see him just pulling in pulling out and then uh finding a different way to get into his pit stall uh he finally gets it but that's just going to cost him a lot of time especially after what happened It'll be shortly before we see where everyone kind of lines up of course and jason martin of course being your leader uh, as he continues to uh, stroll around uh, by himself, and it looks like it's going to be about 9.4 seconds over the next driver, which is Hunter Troll. It's quite a ways away, and then you've got uh, the number 72 of Jack Ritchie, who is uh, not across the start finish line, but he's 24 seconds behind. And you've got Van Alistine, who is over 33 seconds behind. So this front group that was oh so close is now really far apart. Uh, and these guys need to find a lap car. <laughs> That's what they've got to do. They've got to find a lap car. They've got to work with them, uh, and they've got to they've got to hope that they have a car good enough to, to push. Because if they don't, uh, there's going to be nothing for them here. Because uh, they're, they're going to be sitting with just what they've got, and if they have any sort of damage, uh, they're going to be they're going to be slower. So the Hunter Tool, he's got some left front damage. Jason Martin's got some rear end damage. And just because of that, uh, we're going to have some, I, we're basically going to have a drag race, a, a very elongated drag race uh, to the finish and to the next pit stop. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never seen Daytona so spread out as it is now. I don't see any, any pairs of cars. I don't see any groups of cars. This is very, very odd for, for me anyways. I don't know how, how you guys are feeling right now, but uh, this is interesting. Yeah, these guys are fairly spread out and trying to, at least right at the moment, the number 46 just has to, all he has to do right now is uh, get himself to the next pit stop, which uh, should be in about uh, 35, 40 laps. And right now you're also going to look back to the 49 of where he's at and he's just now crossing the start finish line. So we're just going to have to monitor each driver as they get to the start finish line and uh, like I said, their, their biggest help right now, their biggest help is going to be trying to uh, trying to get uh, a lap car. But I am looking at the 62 of William Van Alistein. He did come down and he did get some damage fixed. So that will be helpful. And if he gets on the radio and talks to the number five of Nolan Neiman, they can start working together because he has a really fresh car. So if I was on the radio with either of those two teams i would be on it immediately trying to trying to connect with you know, somebody between those two and say hey i know it's not gonna be helpful for you to pull back but we will make so, so much ground and you won't lose a lap that's at least what i'd be thinking um but i'm not the i'm not the driver of these guys i don't know what's going on in, in, in the way that they want to approach the race but that's that's something that i would try and do yeah absolutely now that that's happened you know you're you're so spread out and it's just hard to Hard to make something happen now uh, because you're, everybody's just by themselves, separated by at least maybe f six seconds, uh, most being 15. But you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see how all these drivers play it out for this n last 75 laps. Uh, now you see that number 46 of Jason Martin all by him lo by his lonesome. He kind. I, I think he might like that a little bit, but also not really because, you know, you're, you need a drafting partner, and if somebody else finds one, he's he's going to be all by himself and going to make himself an easy target to get past. As we start to look through the, the field, we're going to take a look at Gary Weaver. He is in the number 41, and... 20 with the 12s on the outside of him and that's a battle for position here for the first lucky dog position it's a pretty darn important position to keep track of because they could uh, that could uh, be uh, it could be interesting going on uh going on later but they are the only battle for position in uh in this entire field right now and they will be continuing to uh to battle as it continues to roll on and number seven number 12 of Gala Weekly, he's going to try and keep 
uh, Gary behind him. Gary's going to have to try and get that position back because uh, any any time if no one spins out, if, it, if, it, if any of the leaders start to uh, get restless, um, they're going to be in op an opportune time. But what they could also do is they could also work together to try and push forward and get back to some of the other drivers like Jason Martin, who has them a lap down. Actually, here's what they ought to do. They ought to work together and get the lap back the old-fashioned way. Absolutely. Uh, that would be a, a great strategy there. And, uh, you know, considering how many cars uh, are kind of, you know, trapped a lap down right now, it's exactly what could happen. Also watching Jack Ritchie and Hunter Truel working together. Finally, 22 seconds behind Jason Martin. That's, that's a long, long way to go. But they are working together. There's a lot of what there's there's nobody really in front of these guys, but they are going to be able to uh, stay where they're at, hopefully be able to push each other and get back to Jason Martin. And Martin doesn't want any of that to happen, but to, he's really at the mercy of tw the 22 second lead, which is an enormous lead. But Martin's really had a a pretty good race so far today, and um, the only bad thing that's really happened to him is he got some rear end damage uh, on the restart, and he has a little bit of right side damage, just a tiny bit, but. These guys, I, I mean, it's going to be a long time before it happens, but they should surely catch him as these runs go on. And the guys behind him, uh, this number 12 and the number 41, they should be able to catch the number 12 too. Uh, only thing about this that I'm wondering about is if they do catch him and pass him quickly, that means these two lap down cars, are they going to be able to pass him quickly? And he's not, is, he, is he going to be able to catch the draft? Or is he actually going to be able to catch their draft and then the second and third place driver will, won't be able to catch him? Yeah, it's a great point. And, you know, you were saying earlier, 23 seconds is a commanding lead, but at Daytona or Talladega, plate track, it's easy to get all those seconds back when you're working together and the guy up front doesn't have somebody to work with. And especially with 70 laps to go, um, you know, you can close in quickly, as you see, as you saw the times drop down from 23 to 21. So, you know, you're, you're having a lot of catching up to do but still catching up uh, ever so slightly as now the 46 so working with those two cars but we'll see how this all works out because uh, you know more cars is more speed in, in drafting so we'll have to see how that works out for them in the end he is starting to get the draft of these guys and I think this will be a that and done deal if he is able to do this now we have seven cars on the lead lap with the 12 and the 41 unlapping themselves the old fashioned way and uh, looks like the 41's trying to go on the outside. Almost hooks the 12 right there. Gotta give, give, him, give him grief if he does that for sure, because he uh, definitely uh, has had a, has been a friend of ours for a little bit, but uh, going around some light traffic right now, and it looks like he's going to try and split him, and goodness, Gary, almost took out the 12 right there. That was a close one. Yeah, close one indeed, and, uh, you know, with how spread out these guys were, it's something you wouldn't have really expected to see, but uh, the gap just kind of closed up there, and uh, close call for, for Gary Weaver, but he makes it through, everybody makes it through, everybody uh, still going forward here, so uh, we keep it clean and green as uh, those cars heading down to the trial now. As we hit what 132, we at LSR TV will take a step aside for the moment. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back in just a moment.
Yes. I'm driving the number 20 JGR Toyota Xfinity car this weekend. Really great opportunity here at New Hampshire at my home track. Over the past few weeks, I've been on iRacing, practicing a little bit here and there with the modified and the uh, NASCAR Xfinity car. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great tool for me to, to kind of get used to that stock car body again and uh, be prepared for the race today. Well, yeah, it's, it's a mile long, so um, the draft kind of plays into effect here with the modifieds, punches a big hole in the air, uh, and we run restrictor plates. So uh, it makes a big difference. Um, just really fast, and, and, and it's our Daytona. So that's what's great about it, and uh, we have a fast car for tomorrow. I think the biggest thing is they're just, they're heavier cars. The tire's a lot different, and the way you go about setting them up's a lot different. They use all four tires more than a modified, where we typically drive off the right rear, you know, so. Well, actually, it's funny. Uh, I raced NASCAR race in 2003 before iRacing came about. And then when iRacing came about, uh, my friend Kevin Iannarelli, who works at iRacing, kind of told me, hey man, you need to switch over to this. And, and when I did, I was like, oh my God, this is like real life. Uh, so I started using it as a tool of mine to, to really prepare for, for modified races, whether it was Stafford or Thompson or Loudoun, uh, Bristol. And then obviously the Xfinity Series last year, going to road courses, trying to get laps. And, and use it as a tool that can get me as prepared as I could be without actually doing it. So it's been great. You wanted the best, you got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. Welcome back to LSR and TV's coverage of the Mick Chester Proud 500 for the drive for suicide prevention and Jason Martin continues to leave. It's a little bit different of a look up here as we have some lap traffic coming up to uh, up through these guys. You're seeing the number five lead this group of drivers and he is in the fourth position. And you've got Gary Weaver who is in the fifth position right in front of the leader. And you've got Jason Martin He's obviously still your leader. And then uh, William Van Alistair, he's in sixth position at default, really far back. But uh, he has that car all fixed up and ready to do some ready to do some work here. As he's trying to get back by the 46 and get his lap back the old-fashioned way. Some of these drivers did. And so uh, we only have five drivers in the lead line, but all these guys are here. And the 46 is the door open for the 62. He gets pushed down to the very bottom. And once again, we get something that's a little bit, uh, a little bit on the antsy side of things. But uh, these guys are all trying to get their laps back from the 46, and this is only good for the drivers that are trying to catch him uh, on the uh, on the flip side of things, back in the second and third position. So they go down the back straightaway, and they're single filed out, and. All those guys are fighting for position in front of him, in front of that uh, gray and green car. And uh, here in lap number 140, the Honda drivers just got their laps back. Yeah, very beneficial to them as you saw the number 46 just go up to that top side and let them all by and try to, try to keep that draft going for him because he doesn't really want to be in the mix that much because he is the leader. Uh, but he has, he clearly had no problem with letting them all by because he knows that if he's behind them, there's no way that, that they're going to catch him, so letting them all go. And now we have seven cars in the lead lap. Uh, Hunter Truel and Jack Ritchie still the closest ones out of all of them trying to catch back, but still 23 seconds behind. They were down to 20 seconds, but now Jason Martin catching these guys and keeping that draft up, able to pull back away from them. So now we have a little bit of uh, separation back again from them. And we have just hit the two-hour mark, and lap 142, good, still good amount to go. We're going to get a, probably a little bit more action ramped up between the drivers right here and maybe a little bit of more uh, trying to go for Hunter, Hunter Trula and Jack Ritchie. Yeah, I was just about to talk about them as well, the fact that they, uh, they've got some pretty, pretty recently uh, looking cards right now in terms of how much damage they have sustained throughout this race. And, uh, 
looking at them and uh, they're, they're trying to do uh, just you know just about everything they can just trying to try and get the pushing done and uh, trying to get around a lot of traffic here as they're getting around the set 25 right here uh, they're losing time now to uh, Jason Martin who's able to just pull away and and, and get the get that spot away but I, I have a feeling what we're gonna probably see if uh, pit stops don't happen before this is that Jason Martin is going to have those drivers who are almost a lap down get back to around to Hunter Chul and, and Jack Ritchie and then it's going to be one of those kind of awkward situations where your leader is the only driver on the lap and then we've got a lot of these guys who are uh, they're basically all around fighting for position um, it's, it's, it's one of it's one of these wild races that uh, is really really difficult to see how it's going to end and pit stops are going to change everything in this one when they when they do happen here later on in this race So, uh, everything very spread out still, guys. Uh, so, uh, the way that things are right now, and I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but if we get a yellow flag, everything gets stacked back up. Uh, a couple cars, you know, may get their laps back. Uh, everything cycles back through. Uh, what would you say this race would bring for the end? I have a feeling the way this race is going, at least currently, is we're about to hit the uh, three-fourths mark of this race. Is uh, Jason Martin just needs to have a good, clean pit stop, and hopefully he can get around, uh, get, uh, get and stay with these uh, these guys who are lapped down. Just uh, needs to coordinate when some of them are going down because uh, that's something we didn't see earlier was uh, the coordination of guys going down pit road, um, and then we did see it later on. Uh, it just didn't work out for everyone's benefit, but. Uh, uh, Hunter Tool and Jack Ritchie, you got you got to believe that they're working together to uh, to stay uh, to stay together after pit stops happen because pit the pit stops are has been the number one thing that has broken these guys up. Um, you know the cautions have brought these guys back together, and the long green flag run with these pit stops have really uh, really spread these guys out. Um, and so if these guys continue to work together, maybe if the 46 of Jason Martin falls off this lead pack, which does look a little probable here. I'm starting to look at him just lose a little bit of uh, a little bit of an advantage off these guys in the front, but he looks like he can get right back. But I, I just have a feeling that these two need to just keep working at it. They may be losing time, but it's going to be really helpful if they're able to come out and put right together. Yeah, that's the, that's the struggle or the... Uh, the risk that you have taking uh, just letting all those drivers by you know you could easily lose that draft as he goes below the yellow line for a split second uh trying to trying to keep with that number 12 but you know it, it could be quite easy for him to lose that draft as now you see the 46 catch back up to them but uh you know if we do have another caution stacks everybody back up uh, jason martin and higher true have been the dominant cars thus far so I'm feeling that these drivers are going to, those two drivers, if we do get a restart, they're going to be the ones that prevail and uh, are going to be the ones fighting for that 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 last spot. And, uh, you know, I've also seen that number 62 of William Van Alsner really battle hard, and he's just had some bad luck. But if we can get another caution and stack them up, he's going to be also a hard charger to the front. So I uh, have to keep an eye on that as we come to lap 149 shortly as the number 46 gets very close to that number 12 but able to keep it away enough for no contact so we'll have to keep an eye on them as well and so this group's getting a little dicey up here they're starting to get double file and i know they're running for position right here but uh right now currently it's uh it's going to slow them down just a little bit between themselves and the group behind and I don't know if they're looking to come down pit road soon, but uh, they'll at least have one more pit stop unless they pit right before, right after lap 160. So getting ready for some lap traffic here. Here comes the 77 as they're going to be navigating themselves around uh, Mr. Vic Bloom, who's 10 laps down, still out there, still chugging along. And I think there might be another one here in the looming distance. Yeah, the 25 is right there in front of him. That's James D. Miller. He's close to him as well. And so these guys uh, really just uh, rolling around single fire, file and uh, getting around these lap cars nice and nice and evenly and uh, I just, I find it <laughs> I, I think one of the most interesting things is the fact that the driver in fourth place is leading this group of drivers who's the leader is behind them by quite a significant amount there goes the 12 car on the outside wall just a little bit he's going to come back down right in front of the number 41 and the 41 has a check up and Caleb Weekly did not put enough wheel into it just went right up the track but 
was able to not get too much damage. Has a little bit of right front damage now, but okay, that was a he definitely avoided damage. Uh, uh, definitely avoided a big disaster right there. A little bit of a scary moment right there down uh, off the corner. Everybody makes it through clean and green. Everybody still on all four wheels. Everybody's still going forward right now as these guys head down the back straight away here. Uh, uh, 46 machine, Jason Martin, just trying to keep his car clean at this point. All those guys in front of him are racing for position. So he's just trying to stay out of the way uh, at this point of the race. Yeah, we're getting close to lap 150 here. Here comes one driver coming down pit road all by himself. That's Gary Weaver. Must not have been able to come down, uh, to make it on fuel, so he'll get down to 60, uh, 60 miles an hour, and he actually makes it down pit road quite nicely. So we'll watch him come down and uh, get service on his car. Gary Weaver going down to his pit stall. He's going to be in it and nice, and there he is. Get a nice and easy in his pit stall. and gets the right sides up. He'll get the left, left side up, and... Then he'll be off and away to get uh, try and hope and hope to get somebody to, to be able to push him here. As you see, the uh, Hunter Hunter uh, Troll and Jack Ritchie go by him. He's not gonna be able to hook up with uh, hook up with them on the track, but uh, he has to find somebody if he's gonna try and uh, get back to the lead lap. Yeah, and you know we we are now down to four cars in this in this pack right here, this lead pack essentially, uh, but. Um, a lot of battling going on with these cars trying to trying to get for position as you see uh, really these three cars are just battling and you see the number 12 get a little bit further back as now the 46 is going to go below him and we see the car entering on the back stretch once again letting them all go very nicely the number 41 able to get up cleanly as the number 12 is going to head up to that top side again uh, get very close to that wall, but able to keep it off. And the number 46 able to make that clean pass and going to give him some insurance as to if he does lead, lose this pack right here, he's going to have the number 12 to be able to work with and be able to push him back up to the to the pack of this. And uh, uh, Hunter Truel and Jack Ritchie still losing a lot of time as we see a car down low. That's Hunter Truel. Truel. Wow. Yeah, that's the 49. I don't know what happened. But, oh no! We're, looks like uh, the, the drafting went wrong uh, completely. He got turned in the outside wall, and he's done. That's the that's gonna be the end of his night, no that's doubt. That's just heartbreaking. Because yeah, he's out of resets, and yeah, he blew the engine. He's not gonna really get back to pit road, I don't think. Actually, he's starting to drive that car back to pit road, but uh, yeah, his night's basically over. Oh. He's chance of trying was, to win. That the was a vicious hit too. Yeah, his chances of trying to win the race is going to be hard, hard hit, and so is Jack Ritchie. Uh, so basically, if you're Jason Martin, <laughs> you, you just need to make sure you don't make any mistakes at this point. Yeah, he's got a, a huge lead over the field now, and uh, uh, we saw second place just rack out there. Now, uh, Jason Martin right now just kind of hanging in the draft with a couple of lap cars. He's heading down the back straightaway into turn three uh, at the moment. Uh, a little bit of help from the 62 and the five machines now. And, uh, it looks like as long as he can hang back there, he should be okay. Yeah, and he has to hope that these two in front of him don't have a similar issue too because those guys behind him, they're trying so hard to to get up to them and try and try and just have a shot at winning this race and uh, so he's not going to have a chance to do that uh, which is a really really big shame for Hunter Truel who now finds himself outside the top five in sixth place position Gary Weaver finds himself two laps down but he'll be able to pa pass him and then uh, there's a lot of lap, uh, lap down cars that will also benefit from that as well so right now it is, the, it is in the best interest for these guys to stay single file until pit stops and, and just try and find somebody to uh, somebody to hang with because there's not many guys out there. But there goes the number five of Kayla Weekly or uh, of Nolan Neiman. He's going to come down. He slides in, but he's able to make it in time and under speed. So he'll come down from fifth place position. And how he is he going to make the long trick down pit road? Remember, these guys are now. I mean, yeah, they're not in the lead and 
They may be let down, but some of these guys still fighting for position as he, uh, number five of Nolan, even actually goes to his pit box and has to readjust a couple times. Actually, he's still not in his back box. He's still fly, fly, going through and finally gets to uh, the point where he's in his box and he's going to get some service, I think. The right sides aren't going up, but uh, he's still there. I, I don't know if he's got a service quite yet, but I don't see the right or left sides going up at any time right now. So... Uh, I think he's. I think he must have or something. I didn't see them go up, but uh, nonetheless, looking at your leader and the third place driver here, uh, William Valen uh, Van Allistein, still in third place and right in front of leader. It's one of those odd things that we've been talking about in this race. Yeah, now we have three cars on the lead, lead lap as number 62 is leading, you know, quote unquote, leading this uh, front pack and. Uh, number 46 right behind him and that's the driver the number 62 machine is the driver that hasn't had much luck but his car is bad fast so uh you know it's just a combination of uh, being at the wrong place wrong time and you know just being uh, having bad luck and now he's coming down pit road right now we we'll have to take a look at him see if he makes it in there clean Lee as he's sliding them as well, but makes it as number 12 follows and that leaves Jason Martin all by him by his lonesome But Jack Ritchie is also all by him lonesome close to 40 seconds back and uh, This is all that's left Yeah, watching these guys come down pit road and 46 of Jason Martin comes down uh, stays out by himself and so what that will do that is going to put him in turns number three and then that's going to have jack ritchie be going out of turn four and it's kind of a question of when these guys come down pit road and if they're making mistakes if there's no mistakes by any of these guys they basically finish where they're at um and then we've got to uh we've got to kind of see where everyone else is going to finish as well but uh permitting no mistakes on pit road by some of these guys are going to be uh, finishing exactly where they are or if they they start to work together i mean uh, there's a lot of drivers still out here that are on the lead lap but uh, could get some entertainment by uh, working with one of these lead lap drivers and uh, starting to help them out so uh, looking at to number 41 being one of those drivers of uh, that being uh, gary weaver he's actually going to be pushing the 25 here that's james d miller he's uh he's at least getting himself a little bit more momentum he's helping out the 25 and so they're not doing a whole lot to uh they're not going to be really advancing the position a whole lot but they're at least uh at least helping each other a little bit and caleb weekly right here he's behind william right now in the 62 and uh those guys are uh are fighting for position really so it is the uh more anticipated looking battle on the track but uh realistically they're going to be trying doing the same thing as jack richie and uh Hunter and Trill were trying to do earlier and just try and go faster each lap than your leader, which is uh, Jason Martin. If they can pull away and they can start maybe finding some guys to to work with, uh, they might be able to they might be able to figure something out, get themselves uh, get themselves away. But they're still a lap down. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, with two cars in the lead lap, it's just going to be hard to you know have these other cars catch up to them and get back in the lead lap but it's still possible because he, the 62 and the 12 are the only cars one lap down they're working together and they can easily catch back up to jason martin and get their lap back so uh we'll we'll see how that works out for them they were able to do it once before and now they're i'm sure they're going to be able to do it again so uh yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes Jason Martin comes down pit road possibly for the final time tonight as he probably will be able to make it the rest of the way on fuel So he comes down and gets nicely nicely in his pit box and we'll get some service here The right sides are jacked up and then the left sides will will be the same and uh, he will be getting out And there's uh, no one really behind him. There's a, a 22 uh, who's uh, who's still out there I think he might be able to work with how, with him and then Liam Sheen is actually coming down pit road as well on the 59 he is in 10th position right now. Here comes Jack Ritchie. He comes from second place position as well. This could be this could be dire for him to get a really good pit stop as Jason's already off and away down in turn number one and two. So Jason Martin gonna be riding all by himself as he has been for the last couple laps now. And uh, I feel like your second place driver, uh, Jack Ritchie as well, will be all by him, uh, all by himself here. Uh, first and second place, just kind of out on uh, a Sunday night drive currently. But uh, you know, it is what it is. And 
uh, I'm sure right now Jason Martin isn't really complaining. Oh yeah, definitely. Just because of uh, the situation he's in, he doesn't really have anything to uh, to really worry about. But uh, as we are hitting lap six, 161, lap 162 here as Jason crosses the start finish line, we will take a moment and step aside here on LSR TV. You've been watching the coverage of the Bank Chester Proud 500 with the drive for suicide prevention. We'll be right back. BRB. Gauges. We'll give you four tires. Three, two, one, now. We're done. Get going. Welcome back to LSR TV's coverage of the. Nick Chester Proud 500 for the drive for suicide prevention and we're seeing a little bit of a mix up here at the front of the field it's William Van Allenstein at the front of this group but he's not the leader he's actually in second place the leader is actually right behind him that's the 46 of Jason Martin in that Razor Chevrolet and he is uh following the 72 he's actually giving him a push to try and get by these guys I don't know if he's a teammate or not but he's helping him out here trying to get past these two guys and with the racing we've been seeing, it's, uh, it's it's actually the most action we've seen in quite some time between these guys. It's been fairly calm on the speedway, and these four drivers are the only ones in the lead lap, but the 46 is the leader, so he's basically going to lap the 12. He's 
basically lap the whole field, uh, except for these three drivers in front of him, but he's about to if he's able to get around him. And so we have two by two here for second place position and a door bang going out into turn number one, the 62 and the 72, they make contact. Yeah, getting really close up in turns one and two, 72, just trying to get that side draft, but got a little bit too close to the number 62. So they're gonna have to watch for that. It's a 46 lurking in the background and wanting to just hang tight and not get into any mix as he is the leader and has a commanding lead at that with a 45 second lead, the second place right in front of him. So he knows that he's gonna be able to hang tough and uh, you know, keep his ground and uh, the number 25 is gonna be staying up on that high side and they're gonna pass him as we're three wide for a second, but everything comes out okay as the number 12 gets a little squirrely coming out of the tri-oval up against the back bumper of the number 62 machine of William Van Alsner. 46 of Jason Martin just needs to, just to play it cool right here, and I think we've said that a couple times, but I'm going to really stress it right now because with about 30 laps to go, I don't know if he has a reset or not. I don't remember if he had used it, but uh, if anything is to happen with any of these guys up front and one of them makes it out and then he gets involved with it, well, that's a that's a win that just kind of goes away at that point. So, just about to the 30 to, 30 laps to go mark, and this is about the uh, the distance you would have seen earlier on in the uh, peak race. So, the uh, Jason Martin machine is trying to uh, lead the most laps and win this race. He has led over 100 laps. He's at 112 laps this time by. It's quite a few laps, and so you're riding on board and seeing basically all the action in front of him. You're seeing this lap car. Uh, lap car that's going to be the 59, who had gotten the wall really hard earlier on and is still somehow uh, making some laps out of this one. And uh, seeing his point of view of uh, basically the lead right now. And so uh, right now, it's I, I think that most of these drivers don't have the pit. And so you can see the 72 trying to go to the outside of the 12 right there and trying to try and spice this race up and uh, try to get a position before this one's over. Oh, I turned him! Oh no, he turned Caleb weakly. Oh. And he's gonna hit oh, the inside wall. Inside wall goes the 12 machine. Unbelievable. He didn't uh. make much impact, but nevertheless, he lost a lot of ground. Caleb weakly. Yeah, we're gonna see a replay up here of exactly what happened. Came out of four, just dove down to the bottom and just dumped him. Uh, I saw him try and get a good run off of turn number four and just flat out took him out and no caution comes out. But now we only have one driver, uh, only two drivers on the lead lap and one of them uh, being the 72. He just took out the number 12 right there. And I don't know, I don't think it's on purpose. He's trying, he's trying to get a lot of momentum out of that corner, but uh, nonetheless, he he, uh, he did get into it pretty heavily. We're watching the replay right here. He's on the top side as you're watching right now. He's gonna try and get a lot of momentum and go down to the bottom and try and get under him and uh, gets below the yellow line and just, just picked up his left, uh, just picked up his tires and just you know, sends him down into the uh, the inside barrier. So, uh, really unfortunate for him, and so that'll put him a lot down with a lot of other drivers. And that's something you can't do. And I, I've seen a lot tonight is you you have to get the momentum on the outside. If you're trying to get the momentum on the inside, you're just gonna run into him and uh, and, and get yourself spun out and, and uh, get a little bit of the line. So, uh, right now, Jason Martin leads over everybody but J uh, Jack Ritchie by a lap and it, you could basically call it a lap because he's right behind and pushing it so first and second are right next or our noses to tail but uh, seconds in the front and the uh, later in the back because he's a lap ahead so uh, million van uh, Alistine is going to stay in the in the near clutches of this one as we're about close to 25 laps to go but this basically seals up this race for the six for the 46 if he's able to just keep going guys and Man, you just did not want to see that. No, it's just a hard break and a tough break for Caleb Weekly. You know, he had a strong race and all night long, able to keep a good, 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 uh, solid uh, position up there. You start at ninth and uh, went all the way up to sixth at one point, and, uh, or excuse me, all the way up into probably fifth, fourth, or third, and then just uh, bad, bad place, wrong place, wrong time. And, you know, he just got spun in the inside wall. I'll give him kudos. He, he's going to keep on going, but, you know, his race is basically done at this point. And lap 130, 73, excuse me, uh, it's it's not looking good. Not looking good for him, but like we said earlier, the one driver that is going to be having a party after this one is definitely uh, 
is definitely Jason right there. And something I something I was also going to say is that uh, another little oddity is that the 62 with William Al Van Allen is in third place behind the leader. Uh, this 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 top three is in a wacky order because one driver's a lap down, the other driver is not, and the leader's in between them. Um, the only time you would normally see this is at a road course or uh, in the middle of pit stops uh, during. Uh, during a short track or something like that, but uh, Daytona we're seeing these guys single filed out with 26 laps to go and Trying to figure out a way for uh, Any of these guys to get an advantage. It's really just a waiting game for these guys And I hope that they don't have any uh, any near misses or or any big issues between now and the end of the race and uh, I mean if the 62 wants to start fighting with the 72 he's gonna have to try but we saw that happen earlier the 62 tried to pass and uh, these guys really I uh, really didn't want him up there for some reason, so currently as it stands, the 46 is just in a good position, just can't make any mistakes, and now they can make 72. They've got 25 laps to go when they hit the start-finish line, and uh, one eighth till the end of this race, and at this point in the race, and we said it earlier as well, uh, and I think it's a good time to give a good big shout-out to our friends at Joel Real Timing. Uh, because coverage of all LSR TV broadcasts is brought to you by Joel Real Timing. Real Timing is the official timing software of LSR TV, and whether you spend your time on the sim, behind the wheel, on the pit box, or from the spotter stand, Joel Real Timing is the go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You can get yourself a basic download, or you can get the pro version today at joel-real-timing.com. And so, Jason Martin continues to lead and in a dominating fashion at least right now and and that beautiful looking 46 car behind the 72. These guys heading down through the trioval now. 46, Jason Martin just kind of riding in between these two drivers now. 72 in front of him and uh, 62 right behind him. He's just kind of tucked in the middle now. He's got plenty of uh, plenty of room. Uh, you know, still can't make any major mistakes, but uh, you know, anything little won't really throw him off. As these guys coming up to a, a couple of damaged lap cars now. Looks like they're going to try to squeeze in up on the high side here, and uh, we'll succeed successfully do so. Looking at uh, the number four position and number five position, Gary Weaver and Nolan New uh, Neiman, they have found themselves uh, just inside the top five and they are going to either push or, or contest position, but they're uh, fairly far away from the leaders uh, who have just crossed the start finish line. And they find themselves in the back straightaway uh, with basically uh, no help aside from each other. and. Uh, basically what they've got to do to keep themselves away from everyone else is just uh, just ride with her where they're at as well and and keep pushing in, in a similar fashion as the guys that towards the front are doing and um, Gary Weaver's had an up and down race and Nolan New, uh, Neiman he's he was at the front for a long time in this race I mean he was really far up there uh, but now even though he's in fourth he's quite a ways back as we've talked to uh, talked about through basically the entire race so uh, Nolan trying to uh, either reel the 41 to help push or uh, or just kind of just you know, like you said earlier just out for a Sunday drive at this point uh, for some of these guys that are just trying to uh, trying to get to the end of this one and not make any mistakes as they are a lap down and 59 of William Sheen he's still out there trying to uh, lock some laps and Caleb Weekly we saw him get spun off of turn number four he is in the sixth position still although it would be a lot to take him away from that because he would have to be seven more laps down in order to do that but it uh, looks like the late pack is to get him Caleb Weekly in turns number three and uh, the uh, field is starting to come in on him but I'm starting to watch the 62 he actually got a little bit of a curbing right there and started to slide up the track and uh, going through turns uh, going through turn number four uh, I think he wants to try and get the position away from the 72, but I just really, I don't think that that's going to really benefit him at this point. Uh, he, I think the best thing to do is just wait and see if there's a mistake in front of him, and if there isn't, he's just got to deal with it. Just one of those racing things where he doesn't have the fastest car right now, and uh, the leader is not going to let him by uh, very easily. So these guys are starting to catch the number 12 of Caleb Weekly, and and they should be able to get by him with ease here just very, very shortly as uh, Jack Rich, Richie was the guy who just uh, uh, spun him out not, not too long ago. So hopefully those shenanigans will happen here as they get by very nicely. I was hoping that it would go as it was and it did. Yeah, it's very lucky that that didn't go any more south than it needed to. Uh, 
and, you know tempers do flare at, at long at long tracks just at the short tracks so you know lucky to see that we just went through uh, there all a single file and still able to go out for that Sunday drive uh, but you know coming close or actually Monday drive for now that uh, <laughs> for the uh, East Coast folk uh, watching this stream so uh, Jason Martin is still out in the lead and uh, we're still in a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a sandwich coming on so uh, see how that goes well, at this point in the race, we have caught up with the number 49 of Hunter Truel, and we'll uh, we'll get a talk with him. Hunter, you were involved in that accident earlier with the 72. You guys were it looked like you were drafting partners there for a while. It just went south. Uh, kind of talked about what happened there. Uh, yeah, we were working, me, Jack, and uh, working together uh, for most of the race there, and lucky pit stop. Jack got separated. I figured I'd wait up for him. And got to draft him and those things happen when you're drafting at those speeds. And now, you were having yourself actually quite a good race. You had led a lot of laps, and as we see, uh, something happened with some of the leaders right here. Uh, we are, we're, we're a bit curious about how this race has really been going, and uh, the, the, they had a few accidents, but for you, it was, it was actually a pretty darn good race for you until then. Yeah, absolutely. I was running good. I was staying out of the wrecks, which was one of the main priorities. Um, but most of the race, I just was working with Jack and working with Jason. We were just really just trying to make it to the end, uh, hope to fight each other at the end of the race. But it was great racing uh, while I was in there. Well, we thank you for uh, giving us some of your time, uh, even though you are out of this race and don't have a bid for winning this race. But uh, I have seen a, we have seen a little bit of a development with the lead pack. It looks like Jason Martin has lost uh, lost his grip on keeping William Van Allisteen a lap down, and they might work together for the next 20 laps to try and catch him. So we'll uh, we'll talk to you uh, perhaps soon in the future, and uh, well, good luck on your uh, on races in the future. I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. All right, there you have it, driver of the number 49 machine, and this is an interesting development here, guys, because. Uh, I don't think they have enough time to 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 get away from from Jason, but they are going to be uh, they are going to be working together quite nicely, I'd say. Uh, and might they might try and and, and do it uh, if they can get around the track and get away from the 46. Uh, they are the two, uh, other than him, they are the two cleanest cars on the track. They need to break the draft and 15 laps, 45 seconds. I don't think it's possible, but uh, they'll, I think they'll at least give it a shot here. Yeah, I yeah, unfortunately, at this point, Austin, I, I think it's a little bit too late for them to be breaking away like that. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, with the amount of laps that these guys have left, uh, the time that they'll make around the racetrack, uh, I don't think they'll get there, but uh, they will definitely pull away quite a bit. That last time by, they are quite even, and with uh, 16 laps to go, it kind of leads us to think of what could happen if, happen if that had happened earlier. The next driver on the track in front of the 72 of Rich, uh, or sorry, Jack Ritchie, is just now hitting the start-finish line, so there is no one to work with, really, for these guys, as you see the 62 go up and down the track a couple times, and I don't know if he's trying to get momentum or, 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 or whatnot, but uh, right now... Yeah, he needs to uh, really just try and get as close to the bumper as possible and really do some big, big pushes. Otherwise, it's, the 64 is going to get right back in the picture, and uh, they're not going to be fast. They're going to be slower. And actually, in fact, uh, both drivers were slower. Yeah, as the 62 almost turns to 72 right there, I'm, I, I'm not sure what they're doing. If they're going to try and break away, that's not the way to do it. And so the 62 is going for position at this point, and they're going around the bottom. So uh, he wants one more position before this one's over. So side by side for second place. Yeah, absolutely. Going down the back stretch, close to a uh, quarter panel, quarter panel, and uh, very closely uh, uh, gets together. Is the 46 going to catch back up to them? And now, uh, you know, you're you're just uh, logging laps at this point. But you know, you also have that statement in the back of your mind. You know, you want it. You want to get back. You know, to the back bumper of the number 72 machine and. You know, you want that position as well, but you also need to finish this race. So maybe just hold on a little bit longer and, uh, you know, you'll have that position. Uh, but, you know, we're just going to have to watch out and uh, 
see how this race works out for this number 62 of William Van Alsner that has had a strong car, but just terrible luck. For the time being, these two guys, Jack Ritchie and William Van Alstyne, uh, they had their chance, I think, to push away. But uh, right now they're going to the top side, which is not something I was expecting, at least at the moment. And so uh, 72 is going to stay there. And I think if the 62 goes to the bottom, I think he'll have a chance at least. Uh, yeah, it's uh, actually passing him. I, that's the shorter route to go. And he's showing it now, but he needs to show it on the entrance of the corner. Yeah, right here is the, is the place you need to do it. And it may not have the momentum. And he needs, to, he needs to stick with one line going up and down the track. He's only going to be slower in the track. So the 46 is kind of just, well, I think he's laying off quite a bit. Just, uh, just staying there, just uh, knowing he just has to put just more, a few more laps into this one and he should be fine uh, but these two uh, I think they're still trying to fight for position and the 62 is going to try and get advantage on the bottom but 72 who's got a lot of momentum on the top of it uh, getting off and closing the outside wall as well yeah, those guys moved up to the upper groove around here at Daytona. And, you know, earlier, I think I jumped the gun when I said that those guys would pull away by quite a bit because uh, the 46 machine of Jason Martin, he's caught back up to those guys. Still kind of in the draft there. They moved up to the high line, started to get a little bit racy there. And he had the opportunity to catch back up, not for position. Uh, Jason Martin still holds the lead here, but those two drivers up ahead of them are fighting for position. Just over 10 laps to go here in this one, and it's basically just the battle for uh, for second place right now as these guys are going through turns uh, three and four. We got a nice view from that uh, number 46 machine just now and showed that uh, basically where these guys were gaining and losing, uh, losing time, so. You know, we can't be counting the uh, the laps from the drivers that are crossing the line before the 46. Uh, basically, when the 46 crosses the start finish line the last time around, the guys in front of them will be uh, the guys in front of them will still be competing for for that uh, position. So it'll be fun to see the 12 hits the outside wall. He's going to hit it again. He's going to hit the 62. Oh, He's no. going to spin out right the in the leader. Oh. The leader's involved. Oh my Jason goodness. Jason Martin. No oh, my way. Goodness. Well, I don't think this one could happen in any sort of way, guys, but uh, that just happened. And uh, the 46 has absolutely got its, its nose destroyed, and so does the 62 has his right side pretty messed up. And uh, basically, this one's going to be a survival of who can finish this one out. And Nolan Neiman, the number five car, he's one of the cleanest cars out there right now. And he might be the guy to win this one because of the fact that he is going to probably get that lap back because the 72 of Rich Jack Ritchie was involved in the accident. Unbelievable wreck the way it unfolded. It looked like uh, 72 machine went up to the outside wall, 62. A kind of innocent bystander there, 72. Spun back up the track and uh, collected your leader at 46. So what the drivers uh, right now, I think, are thinking is whether they should come down pit road and get damaged fixed. Uh, if you're Jason Martin, this is just this is just a heartbreak. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say that you didn't need to be up there, which is definitely the truth. But at the same time, um, what do you do? I, it's kind of hard to say if you're Jason Martin what you are supposed to do in that kind of situation, just to back up completely and let them uh, continue to gain on you on the next uh, next round. Uh, and whatnot so uh he will lead in front of uh william Val van alistine who is uh coming out of turn number two right now so he'll he's get a humongous advantage of coming down pit road and getting damage fixed if he decides to come down pit road and he looks like he's going to driver in second he's even on even isn't even in turns three and four yet so he just keeps the pace nice and even doesn't speed He's going to be able to get some damage fixed, and maybe he has a, a faster pair. If he has a faster pair, I'd say this race is over, uh, just because of the fact that he should be able to get a really decent restart here. Um, and he looks like he's going to slide into his box nice and cleanly. He does not have a restart. so at, Or, yes, he does. His car looks pristine. <laughs> so for him, wow, he held on to that <laughs> reset for a long time, and uh, he's in good hands. But look at the five. He's going to pass him right here. But he's a lap down still, actually, so it shouldn't actually matter. Uh, 
Oh boy, maybe a little bit of tempers going on between 25 and uh, I believe it was the 59. Uh, I think it's just miscommunication there. Uh, I think uh, under caution, we were talking about uh, the, the number 12. I was trying to get around and uh, yeah, like maybe the 59 just jetted his car out to the right for some odd reason to... I'm, I'm not sure what that was to be honest with you, but uh, we'll continue on with the action of with this with the race. The uh, number 72 of Jack Ritchie is in front. He'll get his lap back and then he'll be on the lead lap to race with these guys once again. Then the next driver would be Jason Martin and uh, William should be, where is he at? It looks like he's coming out of pit road right now. So he'll start in the second position. Um, and yeah, so it'll just be a three horse race once the 72 gets his lap back and he'll have to navigate through some lap traffic. But this will be more than likely our final race start of the race uh, here coming soon. So number 46 leads here at Daytona with only uh, only a few laps to go. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, seven laps to go. Not a lot can happen. Well, a lot can happen, but uh, with this many cars on the lead lap, you know, you, Jason Martin has got this one in the bag, basically. And uh, you know, he has a fantastic car and uh, been strong all night. Been up in the uh, been up the in the in the lead pack this whole entire night. So um, you know, especially with that fast repair now playing into his benefit, I it's it's going to be really easy for him to just find a way around these cars because uh you know the 72 got into that that incident and uh you know the 46 is the cleanest car out there uh so we'll have to see how this all works out in the end probably going to be about f five to six laps to go when we go take that green flag and you know it's just been uh been uh quite the race all night and you know so we've seen things that you've never seen before on uh, long or uh, restrictor plate uh, tracks before so we'll see how this one plays out in the end and uh, we'll see if we get another caution I think at this point I'm gonna pull a quote from uh, from the famous Fox booth have I ever have you ever and uh, the answer is going to be no I have never in this race in particular uh, three drivers have an opportunity to win this race at the end of the day and um, basically right now Jason Martin has probably the best shot to win it but uh, anything can happen right here with everyone getting right back to it and Jason was just in such a opportune part uh, opportune time to uh, to get that uh, he what the good thing about him, about it for him uh, is that even though he didn't have the caution and everyone got to got to catch up to him is that the uh, 62 has, does have some damage. So while the number uh, 72 gets his lap back, he has some massive damage on that machine too. So I think Jason Martin should be in the clear at this point, but he should, he will have the uh, number 62 behind him. And remember, there's a lot of other guys battling for position out here. You've got Kayla Weekly in the 12 car, and he's going to fight against Nolan Neiman and Gary Weaver for position. There's just as many guys fighting for the one lap down as there are on the lead lap. So there's three cars going to fight for the win, and three guys are going to fight for third or for fourth place. Kind of sounds like heat racing, but they're racing together, or should I say class racing uh, and, and road course racing. But uh, this is restrictor plate racing with uh, three drivers on the lead lap and three drivers on the off lap. So lights up on top of the iRacing.com pace car are out. These guys stacked up, doubled up, and ready to go back. Green flag racing here now, and uh, it should be a good race to the end. Everybody all stacked back together now. And definitely should. So these guys come through turn three and four for the final time, and oh, well, it's not for the final time, for the for the final time of this uh, of this uh, pace period. Uh, here is we will have under 10 laps to go. It'll be seven right now and six when they get the green flag. And it's uh, really anyone's game, but I think the big advantage goes to that 46 of Jason Martin here coming to the green flag this time. iRacing official pace car comes down here very shortly. There it goes down to the safety of pit road. And the 46 of Jason Martin starts to un get going on the loud pedal. He's got himself advantage. Six laps to go under green flag conditions. 
And here he goes. He's got to get himself a good jump. And the 62 is right behind him. Goes to the outside. He is going to try and get the win away from him. And the 25 is going to try and push him. That's going to be the 25 of Jason D. Miller. They almost come into contact. And he's trying to take the line away. Still side by side coming off to turn number two. Coming down the back stretch of side by side, still that number 25 still working with the 62 of Van Alsner, able to freight train that 46 on that top side. Let's see if they get clear in time before the turn. Coming down now, getting that position away from Jason Martin. Jason Martin now gonna have to get the draft off of the number 25 of Miller to have any sort of chance. But now the man who has had terrible luck all night long has taken the race lead with five laps to go. What a storybook ending for him if he can hold him off the 25 of james d miller kind of gets out of the way and I'm, I'm unsure if that's a courtesy deal for him but he looks like he has a pristine car so it's a little odd so uh, that's going to be giving the number 46 of jason miller a humongous run off of turn number one and turn number two and he's going to go to the outside and he is going to have a humongous uh, uh basically a freight train of speed going down the back straightaway and so he's going to get in front of the 62 and here comes the 25 back to the back bumper of the 60 of the 62 and there you are now we're back single file between these guys and what an odd assortment of ranges this race has been but the last five laps here we go now down to four laps to go now down to just a few so 46 of jason martin can go back to the lead this time by and i'm unsure what's going on with these three but uh something i will i i'm sure you will happen here in the next couple of laps that'll definitely change the race of uh, what we're seeing right now down through turn two right now heading on to the back straight away now the, the long back straight away perfect opportunity for a pass towards the end of this thing if it were happened uh, you notice maybe a little bit of damage still left on that 62 machine able to get right to the back bumper of the 46 machine down into turn number three that time however a little bit of help from the 25 machine behind him a lot of push from the 25 who's a lap down car he is uh, he resides in eighth position nine laps down but it's still up to make this really interesting for these guys if he's not there i have a good feeling that the 62 would have no chance at winning this race but nonetheless he is right there able to give some big pushes to the 62 and i'm unsure if they're teammates or not but he's at least making this one really uh really fun for the 62 to try and have a shot at it uh, albeit that the uh, 46 has had the strongest car all day long he has led over 120 five laps he's gonna probably uh get over 140 if he leads this prime time by which is an incredible amount we saw him leading earlier and the only other driver to lead nearly as many as him is the 62 who almost gets taken out right there with a 25 i'm not really sure what he's doing but uh he's a lap down car so uh either i think he should either push him or or stay back there because he almost wrecked him right there coming down to the back stretch a little bit of bumping going on with Jason Martin and number 62 William Van Alsner the 25 is gonna have to wait until that last lap to get the number 62 in front again had a little bit of a mix up on that short shoot and the trioval but now we're coming up to lap traffic we'll see how they play a factor into this they look to be uh, headed, keeping up high and uh, letting them go see just a little bit of movement downward but uh, all is clear coming to the white flag here at Daytona International Speedway Jason Martin finally gets the white flag in the air and he is able to at least for the moment keep the lead he leads 141 laps at the end of the night will he lead 142 the 62 of William Van Allistein is going to try and upset this one he is the underdog in this one starting from the back and Jason Martin trying to block oh the 62 gets turned by the 25 big, it clocks big the wreck. five and the 46 is going to come off into turns number three and four and have a clear sail to win this race no contest anymore for the 46 he will come into the trioval and no matter what he should win this race and yes he does he'll collect the checkered flag after, after the number 62 gets taken out into turn number three and that will be a win for the Razor Chevrolet here tonight after a wild, wild night here at Daytona. Yeah, just a wild finish going on to William Van Alsner. Another. <laughs> 
terrible break for him you know terrible breaks all night long and that was just the nail in the coffin for him coming down the back stretch and you see that number 41 congratulating that number 46 uh, but heartbreak for William as he was leading with a couple laps to go then the 46 to Jason Martin takes it all away and just a terrible terrible uh, night for a number 16 machine so Jason Martin will win tonight's race. We'll go through your full field rundown. He win, he wins here tonight at Daytona for the suicide prevention and make, excuse me there, uh, in the make, uh, make Chester proud 500. So he wins tonight's race with Jack Ritchie finishing in the second position. William Van Allistein finishes third. Caleb Weekly finishes fourth. Gary Weaver fifth. Nolan Neiman finishes sixth or finishes uh yeah finishes sixth James D. Miller will finish seventh with Austin Bayway Fairway finishes in the eighth position with Vic Bloom ninth Liam Sheen in the tenth position with Hunter Truel finishing eleventh Abbott Lydek finishes twelfth Byron Rodney finishes thirteenth Carl Zimmerman will finish in the 14th position with Jeffrey Fisher finishing 15th. Nan Oliver will finish 16th. Shane McCurry, Nicholas Schmig, Kyle Beck, and Matthew S. Allen will finish out the last few positions tonight. And we will try and get a hold of your top three here tonight. And it looks like we might be able to get a hold of Jack Ritchie, who finishes in the second position here tonight. And uh, we'll send him down. I'll think, uh, I think Trevin will catch up with him and, and on down on pit road. Here with second place, Jack Ritchie. Jack, that was a long race, and you know a lot of stuff has happened. And you know, how, what was your plan coming into this 500 mile uh, race? You know, it was a very long race to uh, enter, and you know, you just did a fantastic job of keeping it under you. And you started fifth and finished second. What was your plan coming into tonight's race? Well, I mean, my, my plan was to work with uh, my teammates in there. I had a couple couple teammates in the in the race. The uh, the winner of the race actually was one of them, and uh, we were all three. You know, just the plan was just ride up there and get away from the rest of the pack, and and we did at first. It uh, worked out pretty well, and then you know stuff just didn't fall our way, and I accidentally actually turned one of them, <laughs> which was pretty bad. But you know, other than that, it's just it was just it was just a rough race. After that, you know, he had about a lap lead. And uh, it was just, we needed a caution to catch him. We just didn't get it, man. It was just a long 500 miles for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, a lot, a few cautions, but, you know, how, how was your pit strategy and, you know, how did it hinder because of the cautions that you had and, you know, working together? Well, I mean, the, the cautions really didn't affect the, the strategy too much. Um, we knew our fuel mileage was about 40 laps right there so we knew we were gonna at least make four or five pit stops during the race um the tires just really got worn out about 30 laps in man it was really hard to keep it down on the on the double yellow so that was probably the toughest part we got really sliding that last 10 laps of the run and stuff like that and just getting the pit strategy you know just the three of us was tough because you know one of the pit stops we had the 62 right behind us and he barreled in there with us and it kind of messed us up so that, that was unfortunate yeah, absolutely. That's the number uh, 72 driver of Jack Ritchie finishing second. Jack, thanks for your time. Uh, Austin, back to you. Thank you. We'll try and get a word with your winner here tonight, but uh, we'll, we'll wait you for just a little bit, guys. But uh, we'll take final thoughts here at this moment about the race. It was a, a long race, almost three hours long, and uh, really uh, – it was uh, Jason just getting the advantage on pit road. I think is just the the real di difference here, Brandon. It's just he was able to uh, to really win those battles off pit road that were important, and uh, just he. I think the biggest thing is the only mistake he made was uh, being with those guys when they wrecked, and even then he had a fast repair to uh, to really uh, nullify nullify what happened. Yeah, Austin, absolutely. Uh, with these long, long green flag runs that we had here tonight, on and off pit road, can't make any mistakes. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what happened. Uh, and uh, in the end, walked away with a really good finish. All right, well, at this point in the race, we want to thank you for showing up tonight for the 
for the Make Chester Proud 500 and Drive for Suicide Prevention. If you want to keep up on all coverage of LSR TV events, you can go to livesimracing.com. You can go to our Facebook, Live Sim Racing or LSR TV, or you can go to or you can go to our Twitter at LSR TV for everything on Live Sim Racing. So that's been us. I've been Austin Coop. He's been Brandon Kretz and Trevin Valderrama. And then we've also had Cisco Scarmuzo with us tonight as well. So thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next track.